boy. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Next Pro Show. We got Sean Kunayer. We got myself, Corbin Ford, here in the building. We ready to rock. We ready to roll. We got a full show ready for y'all. It's a lot, man. We ready. We pumped. Sean Kunayer, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good. We got a lot to unpack. Four, four, four events this weekend across the country. We got a lot to unpack. As usual, we got some special guests. But I think we should go ahead and get started with the top 10 because we got some we got some highlight plays this week. Let's get it. Let's do it. At number 10, we have Team Hustle's Mason Dowdy with the lefty poster. And then he's, t- he's letting him know afterwards that he put him on his head. Number nine, we got Zach Abdallah from B. Kalen yeah. Clark range out there. Before the half, closing it down. Deeper than Kate and Clark. <laughs> Letting it fly. Number eight, we got top shot is Marvin Warren with the nasty. Meets him at the rim for the chase down block. Pins him against the glass, too. There we go. Number seven, Nick Kamenya. Got the connection to who? Xavion Statton for the standing poster. Got the, sure. the next pro show guest connection up here. Yep. Gotta love it. Top 50 to top 50. Got At number it. six, we got Southern Ties 17U. Devon Scott throws the oop to Cameron Paul. He punches it on the defender. That's Cameron Paul cool. picked up an offer from Ole Miss after this weekend. Don't fly with me. Don't Dang number five, sure. we got Caden Edwards for the rim attack from Chris Sinak. Chris Sinak. Chris Sinak with the rim attack. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> That's nasty. Again, don't want to jump on that. Team next generation here in overtime. Pick and roll, short roll, corner three, bang, game time. Game time. Gotta, gotta love the player in the corner. <laughs> Open corner. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And again, hyped as they should. Number three, we got Southern Ties. Who is it? Nick Gunter. What's he doing? Throwing it on someone's head. Nasty. Don't talk to me. Don't, don't talk to me. No. <laughs> nah. Don't do that. <laughs> Number two, I was at this game live. I saw this happen in OT for game. Mark Claiborne, off off the backboard, he called game. But did he call bank, though? That's a good question. That's the question I want to know. Question. But he says way, good shot. Him. There we go. All right, two-parter here. First, we got Austin on Ponsa. Yeah. He dunks on Monte Stacker. That's what's good. They go down the court, get the ball back to Monte Stacker. He goes up, he says, what's good, right back? That's nasty. That's nasty. Oh, Listen, it's one thing. You to dunk on somebody, then you get to return the favor. Oh, nah, fam. Even the other team, like, what happens? The team knows what happened. Yo, oh, yo, I, I would have had, like you said, Chaco, the same reaction. What I don't even know. Listen that again, that was nasty. Another yeah. fire top 10. Also, I gotta say, real quick, shout out to all the folks who submitted top 10s. Hashtag next pro top 10, right? I got that. Yep, so many can. Yeah, we had a lot. Like I had a couple myself texting me. You had a few Shanku. It was tough. It was tough. Keep those going. We we got a, a pretty rigorous process here. Trust me, we do. On um, figuring out what goes on the top ten. So that's what makes an easy choice. Oh nah, nah, it really isn't. So keep yeah. sending them. We really appreciate the love. We really appreciate shouting y'all out. Uh, and we love the top ten. So let's keep it going. Yes, sir. Speaking of keeping it going, Shanku, what we got next? Yeah. So Corbin, I think we're gonna jump right into the Dallas event where I was at. I've got two special guests. First coming on is Evan Goodwin, class of 26, Team Oklahoma, 16U. He had probably the performance of the weekend, dropping 43 points uh, in a win over Urban DFW. Uh, so, Evan Goodwin, what's up, Evan? What's up? How we doing? Thank you for coming on. Good, how are you? Thank you for having me on. Yeah, good to have you on, Evan. So, Evan, talk to me a little bit about your experience with Team Oklahoma and playing on the Pro 16 over the last few weeks. Obviously, you guys have got out to a good start, 7-1. and one. Uh, yeah, we've actually played pretty well. Uh, last tournament was probably the best competition we played. Yeah. And, uh, I thought we did actually pretty well. Came in there, beat three good pro 16. I mean, uh, next pro teams I actually got hurt in like the midway through like the second game, but we ended up pulling out that, that win and then winning the next game. And then we played a good, uh, YTC team that, uh, beat us, but I thought we did pretty well and it's actually been pretty fun. Good team, good all-around players on my team. But, yeah, it's been fun playing with them. Yeah, that's awesome. I know that YGC team, super tough. They went yeah. through one Pro 16. But uh, talk about your game a little bit for those that are not familiar. Uh, obviously, you had 43. Uh, is there any player comparisons or any players that you kind of inspired your game? 
Uh, I'd say mine's kind of like an old school game. I'd say I kind of play like Steve Nash, maybe a little Ray Allen too. Yeah. Kind of just I can shoot it. I feel like I can shoot it wherever, no matter pretty much anywhere past half court. I feel like I can shoot it. And um, I feel like I got a good floater game. I can pass. I can make the decisions. And I think I've grown in being a point guard overall and just making the right decisions. That's what I've been working on this offseason. Love that. Yeah, for sure. So talk to me about that 43-point game to open the weekend in Dallas. Uh, what were you seeing? Uh, when did you know that you were hot? Uh, you, you were going to go for 43? Uh, probably during uh, warm-ups. I felt pretty good during warm-ups. And then I was just seeing the way they regarded me throughout the entire time. So uh, pretty much the, that first half, I was just getting the rhythm, getting in the flow of the game, getting my floater, getting my spots, finding the open teammates and stuff. And then second half is where I knew I could really take over. The other team was getting tired, and I feel like I could just take advantage of them. I feel like my stamina was way higher than theirs, and I could just get wherever I wanted. And that's how I got my, uh, like, four threes in a row at the end. Jeez. So talking about those four threes in a row, uh, you were running some chase action. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, that's when the ball handler, in this case, Evan, he throws it to the high post, and they'll flow into a DHO. So he got four straight looks off of this. Uh, talk about that. Was that more instinctual, or was that kind of a planned action? Uh, well, I mean, we were just running five out, and I just knew every time I kept tossing to them, they kept going under the screen. Right. I was just going to make them pay every single time they did that. Yeah, you definitely punished them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Every time they dropped, I shot it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they kept going under. They were – I should have face guarded you from the start of the first half. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll know now. But yeah. uh, talk about an area that, of your game that you want to improve going forward. Not only uh, – The game I want to improve is – I guess like I guess passing, passing and being a true point guard. I felt like last year, even through high school, I was more of like off the ball. Then I mean, I t- I was kind of a point guard, but I'm more of this year. I want to step into that role, of being a better point guard and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with all the gravity you attract as a scorer, obviously you can score from anywhere on the floor, but obviously making that next pass is going to be key to taking game to the next level. Yes, sir. But Corbin, you got your. You got your fun question? Ah, you know, you know, I gotta have my question. Thank you, Sean. Cool. Okay, listen. So yeah. we know a little bit about your game. I love that. We saw yep. some footage. Got a little mini film breakdown. Great. You got the ball. Time running out. You need a bucket. You need a win. What's your move? Please let us know. Uh, my move. Go to. You gotta hit him like with like a little hard and little twenty twenty step back Ooh. for the win. Oh, the vintage twenty twenty. <laughs> I like that you called up the year. Thank you. Yeah. I'm about to say which hard, and that depends. Trade deadline hard. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, Sean. <laughs> Respect the hard, <laughs> but that's awesome. Okay, so you want to set him up, step back, dribble for yep. three. Okay, yep. I like exactly. that. Res- yep. Listen, I'm getting the Rolodex here of go-to moves from our guests, and and, and that's up there. I like it. Like yes, that. sir. <laughs> All right, Evan. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate yep. your time. Do you know when your next event is with Team Oklahoma? Uh, I have no. It's somewhere in May. <laughs> I have no when. No idea when it is. I think it's Probably. in Dallas. I think Dallas. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely watching. Thank you guys for coming on. All right, thank you for having me on, guys. Hey, pleasure, bro. Man, Man, fun. I was about to say, hot four in a row. Like at some point, I'm not gonna drop. Defense is a hard job. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold them and say you know that it was what they did was easy. But like, dang, four in a row. Yeah, they've been a fly on the wall for that game. Yeah, for sure. Been nice. Uh, our second guest is the program director and head coach for the both 16 U teams for Oklahoma Wolfpack, uh, Anthony Baker. Coach, how are we doing? Doing good. How are you guys? How's it going, good. Coach? Thank doing good. Happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously your team is off to a great start. But before we get into that, uh, kind of talk about your basketball career. How did you – where did you get your start? How did you end up as – the program director for Oklahoma Wolfpack. I um, actually grew up in a small town, Southeast New Mexico called Hobbs and um, played a little bit of high school basketball. Um, got injured my senior year, broke my arm. So didn't, didn't get to play varsity, didn't go to college, um, but just always loved the game. Uh, ended up having some nephews and some kids that were pretty good and started coaching them. And it just kind of took off from there. So, Awesome. Uh, so obviously, your program as a whole has really done super well. 
uh, starting with 17 U Freeman. They've they've gone six and two. They came off a really good weekend. Really they're led by Kobe Freeman. But I really want to talk about your 16 U Lawton squad and your 15 U Mason squad, who are both eight and zero. They should both see some big big jumps in the standings this weekend. But uh, getting started with the 16 U Lawton squad, which you coach actually, talk about Champ Brewer and kind of his development as a player over the last uh, last year or so. Yeah, Champ's a, uh, a really hardworking kid. Uh, he's had some injury issues in the past that kind of prevented him from getting on the scene a little earlier. Uh, but now he's fully healthy, and you're really seeing what he can do. He's got a great handle. Uh, being a lefty, it's a little difficult to guard because everybody expects that righty. Sure. And, so, uh, and he can really shoot it, which makes people close out on him. He's got a good pull-up, so he can score at all three levels. So he's just... Really tough guy to handle. Yeah, absolutely. And another kid on that team is Anthony Patrick, who plays beside him at Lawton High School. Talk about his game and what you kind of see from him long term. Yeah, Anthony is a long, athletic kid. Uh, he can shoot it really well. Uh, also, uh, he can take it off the dribble both ways. Great pull-up game. And if he gets to the rim, uh, he'll try to put it on your head. So, uh, again, another – three-level score, uh, just really good with the ball in his hands. And so that makes us pretty difficult to beat when you can swing that ball from side to side and attack it from either side, and both guys can break their man down off the dribble. And they're willing to kick it and find open shooters as well. For sure. Yeah, I think he's definitely a guy I'll be tracking long term. And like you said, he's definitely not afraid to jump with anyone. But uh, you, Mason, uh, they are having an unbelievable season. Uh, 8-0, including two Pro 16 wins this past this past weekend against SA Future and Southern Ties. Um, both, not even a single win by less than 10 points, actually. So pretty convincing wins. Yeah. For them. Talk about Ryland Sykes. He's kind of the engine of that team. Talk about his game and what you like about him. Yeah, Ryland's a, a really good, uh, strong point guard. That team is really blessed to have big guards. Um, and so they can take you off the dribble. Uh, they can they can hold you off and finish at the rim. They can post up. Um, it's a really amazing group of kids. They actually finished second last year in the 14U yeah. division at the at the NXT finals. And so I think they were a little underrated, you know, coming back. But they really showed what they can do early in the season. Um, all of the kids buy into uh, Coach Kobe Mason's program. The parents support it big time. Uh, they've had five different kids lead the team in scoring. Uh, it's just super balanced. The The highest average is about 13 points a game, and they've got five guys over eight points a game. So you never know from one game to the next who's going to be the kid to beat you, and that's what makes them special. Like you, you can't just isolate on one kid because they can all beat you. For sure. Talk about uh, Drew Eckel. He had a special weekend, obviously more of a perimeter shooter. Specialist, three point specialist, but he shot the ball at a super high clip. Uh, what do you what do you think about him? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when it leaves his hands, he thinks it's going in. We think it's going in. Uh, again, with those drivers, we can get downhill. And when we uh, ask the defense to commit, uh, we kick out to those shooters, and they and they do their job. Drew is a a knockdown shooter, and he was very consistent over the weekend doing it in all four games. Um, so now he is definitely going to be a person that I'm sure coaches are going to be watching out for and saying, don't leave him. So, <laughs> For sure. Another kid is uh, kind of an X factor for your team, I'd say, Bo Barker. He's probably the biggest guy on your team, offers some really good size and length. Talk about his impact throughout the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Bo, Bo Barber, he's a 6'6 he's a, uh, athletic kid. Um, but he can stretch out and shoot it. He can he can put the ball on the floor. He can get to the rim, take a little contact. Uh, if he gets in the open court, he can get up and dunk it. Um, but he's just got a really smooth game. And just he, the team just meshes so well because they play so unselfish. And so they'll give the ball up. They'll back cut. They'll get easy layups. And uh, I think every game, you know, we go in the warm-up line and the other team looks down there and says, uh, they don't look that tough. And then, you know, then we're up 20. And so yeah. they changed their mind. That's how you get them. 
For sure. Uh, talk about your coaching philosophy a little bit. Obviously, you can't speak of the 15 you coach, but uh, you guys, you're both both your teams in 16, you went 4-0 this weekend. Obviously, your OKC team had a good bounce back weekend after going 0-4 in Norman. But talk about your coaching philosophy, kind of what's worked for you as a coach. Well, you know, you got to cater to the talent that you have. Um, coaching both 2026 teams. I actually coach both teams completely different. My Lawton team is just a bunch of raw athletes, and you don't want to hold them back. You want to let those guys get out. They want to press you. They want to steal the ball, throw it ahead, run, get layups. Um, the OKC team's a little more structured. We run a lot of sets, um, and we have to do it the old-fashioned way. Both teams had great weekends, you know, 8-0 and for – for the 2026s of the Wolfpack, and and they do it different ways. And I think you kind of have to let kids be who they are and just try to get the best out of them, make them the best player they can be for themselves. Absolutely. I definitely agree with all of that. Uh, kind of just a fun question about your coaching. Corbin, I know you want to – it's your guy. All right, listen, you know, I appreciate it. Sean. I always coach – love having coaches on and just asking them for questions. I like to throw out a random one just to kind of get – an idea for the coaching philosophy. And this one it's made his runs. I think we're going to retire the question, get a new one soon, but I have to ask you, um, let's say, you know, you're up three of the team has the ball. Are you a coach who is a opponent of filing up three? Uh, do you like to sit back? What, what is your plan of attack when it comes to that, to just kind of keep that lead? Cause obviously, especially in next pro, like anything can happen. You know, my, my philosophy is, um, I want them to have as little time to make decisions as possible. So if I've got some fouls to give, mm -hmm. I definitely want to foul in, in order to run that clock down so that they have less time to make decisions. But then when it's go time, when we're at that one and one, we just want to play good defense and box okay. outs. I like that. So you would say, okay, that's that's why I was curious about taking that foul three. So I, I, I get that, though. It does make sense to throw it to offense and disarray. I appreciate, again, hearing the insight. All right, Coach, Coach Baker, thank you so much for coming on again. We appreciate the insight, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you for the invite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Another fun coach. Man, they, that that program has had so much success as a whole this through first three sessions. So oh, they're rolling tonight. right now. Yeah, yeah, they are. I can't wait to see them in this area. It'll be fun. Yeah. For sure. All right, Shanku. I, I think this is this is the time. This is the Shanku time. It's time to <laughs> shine here. <laughs> I mean, come on. You you will start on the show anyway. You get it. But uh, you got you got some in depth breakdowns as you do. Uh, we we got some teams to talk about, some players to highlight. You know how you like to get after it. So let, let's get started. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Yeah. All right. I mean, I mean, first thing we got to start with is we'll go seventeen. You kind of work our way down for sure. Let's do it. Let's start with the uh, you know where I hail from, Colorado. Uh, we got the collective, Colorado Collective Murphy. Uh, let's talk about Cole Scherer. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's get a little more insight on his game for me. Colorado Collective Murphy, they had a rough opening weekend in Omaha last weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bounced back in a big way, uh, beating some good teams. And I think they're a team that can really surprise people on uh, the next circuit, maybe even beat some Pro 16 teams. They run a really good, really good offense, sustainable offense. But Cole Scherer is the you know, main guard. Uh, primary ball handler, and he's super fun to watch. He was Gatorade Player of the Year uh, down in Colorado this past high school season, and he's just so fundamentally sound. He's got a tight handle. Uh, he's super skilled. He changes pace. He creates advantages. Uh, he can create for himself both inside and out. Uh, great finishing technique, great footwork. Uh, just super fundamentally sound, really. It's my type of point guard. There you go. I like it. Fundamentally sound, does the job, does it well. You got to love that. Uh, Case and Westfowl. West, yeah. Westfall, yeah, seems to be the big on this team. Uh, is he inside guy? Is he outside guy? What do we have on 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 Kaysen here? For sure, Westfall. He is a high major prospect at six eleven. He can he can stretch the floor, uh, but he's he's a really special prospect. He long term, I can see him like playing at a very high level uh, at a power five school. Really, okay. uh, he he's got incredible feathery touch around the rim. He moves well for his size. Plays above the rim. Uh, he's got a really good feel, underrated feel, I'd say. Uh, makes good decisions with the ball, but then also shoots the ball at a high clip on moderate volume. 
I like that. I like that little inside outside game, two man game between the two. And it seems like they found their footing here uh, this past week. So we yeah. love to see that. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to prominent elite. What do we have on them? How obviously they did well. Uh, is there a play you want to spotlight from that team? Yeah, prominent elite. They're returning from last season. And one of their players, Mason Abedin. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Abedin or Abedin. Uh He's a 6'6 wing. And man, he's a super talented kid. He's got three offers, three D1 offers right now from Cal State, Radford, Weaver State. Um, but he threw down some nasty posters this weekend. He's He can score from all three levels. Uh, really good ball skills. Moves like a guard, even at 6'6", six, six, but he's definitely a player that could that will continue to receive college interest. I like that. Moving straight from them to uh, straight from me off to you. No, that was a bad one. Let's <laughs> talk about off to you. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about team off to you. Uh, who popped off on that squad? Yeah, so Hayden Wood is a guy who popped uh, even in session one in OKC. Uh, he was probably their best player, but he he led their team this weekend in scoring. Uh, had I think two games with twenty plus points. Uh, really creating from all levels. Uh, he's got a good handle for his size, good plays with good pace, finishing through traffic, uh, taking tough shots, making tough shots from all over the floor. So he's a player to watch for sure. That is awesome. That is awesome. I, I love a guy, a guard, especially with a good change of pace and direction. Gotta love that. Um, Jay Uno, we got some fun names. Jay Uno, let's go. Anyway, let's talk about Jay Uno, who took care of business for real. For real. <laughs> they were dominant this weekend, obviously in a lower pool. This was their first weekend. So I'm sure they'll be in a higher pool. Uh, in the future, but they won by an average of 31 points this weekend. They really took care of business, like you said, Corbin. But Landon Short is a guard, 6'2 guard for them. He actually uh, received an offer from UTD, UT Dallas, the day before the event, and he showed why he's deserving of that offer. He's a tough shot maker from outside the paint. He uh, can score inside the paint. Uh, he's got really good balance and footwork when shooting off the dribble, off the move, really, too. That's nice. Good versatility there for sure. For sure. Uh, BYC Elite. Yeah. Uh, Kenyon Aguino. Did I say that right? Kenyon Aguino. 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 There we see. One of those two. Appreciate it. Shout out to, shout out to Kenyon. Let, let's talk a little bit more about his game. Show him some love. Yeah, so BYC Elite New Mexico. Their New Mexico division. Uh, Kenyon Aguino is a 6'7 wing. He holds some D1 offers from New Mexico State and Cal State Northridge, I believe. He's got an inside-out game. Uh, scores really well from multiple levels. Uh, he can also play above the rim. He's got a good handle, and I think his feels super uh, separates him from the rest of his position in class, uh, makes good decisions, processes the floor, scans the floor well. Got to love that. Got to love that. And that's especially something that as he continues to play, I mean, obviously refining and, and, and hyper-focusing on, that will be really cool to for see. Sure. For sure. I uh, also just want to shout uh, Colorado Collective Fairfield, uh, Ballers Nation, OFG Elite, Texas Wildcats. Way to ball out. Also going undefeated. We had quite a few teams in the slate here. We got to get some love to it. And, and y'all are one of uh, one of the great ones. So appreciate y'all uh, rocking it out. Let's hope for another great week next weekend. For sure. All right, moving on down to 16U. We got SA Future. What we got in them, Sean? Let's start with Isaiah Ward and kind of go from there. Yeah, for sure. Before we get into Isaiah Ward, I just wanted to touch on the fact that um, <laughs> for, I'm going to go out and say this. But okay. the four best 16U teams in the Pro 16 League were in Dallas this weekend. SA Future was the only one that came out on top with 4-0. But YGC, Southern Ties, and BTI Pressure Elite, I think mm -hmm. those top four, uh, I think we'll definitely see them down the road later in July. I love that. Okay. Seems to watch. That's a well prediction. I know I haven't seen everyone yet, but those are four that. I'm about to say, some teams like, well, hold on now. Wait, yep. wait till you see us in action. I hope someone proves me wrong, but. Uh, yeah, so going back to Isaiah Ward, he he was the best passer I saw this weekend at 6'6". Um, he's a 6'6 point guard, obviously incredible positional size. Uh, the way he processes the game uh, makes incredible decisions. Uh, at 6'6", he leverages height to create passing angles. And just also his upside as a scorer and as a defender is through the roof at 6'6". He's got a repeatable jump shot in, term, in terms of mechanics. And obviously, all the physical tools to be an impactful defender at a high level. That's cool. That's cool. Um, another guard, I imagine, right alongside him in the backcourt, Donovan Chris. Yeah, Chris is a really intriguing prospect. I tweeted about him quite a quite a bit. I think he's going to blow up this summer. He's six five, probably six eight, six nine wingspan, super lengthy, uh, two way guard. He projects as more of a three and D kind of guard. 
he did flash some intriguing on ball creation uh, with some solid ball handling, but his three point shooting, high volume, uh, fluid mechanics, I think some refinement to his upper body will yield some more consistent results, but uh, disruptive on the defensive end and passing lanes and at the point of attack. Got you. And then another guard, it seemed like SA Future definitely driven from their, from their guard play. Uh, let's sure. talk about, is it Talon Todd? Talon. Yee. Over two on this. Talon Todd. <laughs> let's go. Talon Todd, yeah. He was such a smooth operator. I mean, he's, he's got a lefty, similar to Champ Brewer, who uh, Coach Barker talked about just a bit ago. But he scored from all three levels, uh, got a super quick release, gets it off in tight spaces. He's also a willing passer, uh, makes, makes smart reads, good vision, good feel for the game as well. There you go. I like that for sure. Uh, moving on down to Oklahoma with Oklahoma Wolfpack Lawton. We got two players. We got Champ Brewer, already kind of mentioned, um, and Anthony Patrick. Let's talk about both of them here. Yeah, just to touch on them real quick again. Uh, Champ Brewer, he led his team in scoring uh, 23 points a game. I thought he was more aggressive this week, looking to get downhill, uh, finishing with touch around the rim. And he actually had a standout game in which he shot 13 of 14 from the stripe. And for the weekend, he shot uh, 95%, 20 of 21 from the free throw line. Oh, wow. That free throw, that free throw stroke traveled. That's right. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And then what about Anthony Patrick do you have to share with us? Yeah. So Anthony Patrick's two-way, 6'4 uh, guard, I'd say, uh, super lengthy, uh, super athletic. He averaged 17 points, two steals a game this past weekend. Good physicality as an on-ball defender. Uh, super disruptive with his length, and then also can space the floor, shoot the three ball, and then attack the rim as well. Okay. Solid team as well. I see some standouts why they went 4-0 up there. 8-0. 8-0 uh, through two weeks. Jeez. 8-0. They haven't lost yet. Dude, the game. Mm, mm. Mm. I got to keep tabs on this team now. For All sure. right. We got Florida Bayhawks Bachelor. Yeah. Uh, so, let's talk about – say that right? Yeah. I'm about Bachelor, to say that. Okay, yeah. okay. Listen, my game over here with the announce is kind of rough. Uh, Arcadian Davis? Yeah, Arcadian let's Davis. Go. All right, let's let's talk about he's, uh, he's a six six wing. He led their team in scoring. Um, he kind of makes an impact on both ends of the floor. I'd say he averaged thirteen points a game, eight boards, more of a play finisher, above the rim athlete. I uh, did a really good job controlling the glass with his athleticism and length as well. Okay, I like that way to impact the game on multiple levels for sure. Yeah. Um, a guy who held it down defensively, Connor Chorus. Uh, yeah. Can you describe a little bit more about his game? How defensively he was a presence? Break him down. For sure, yeah. Horse is another guy with good size, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, he's got a defensive identity, I'd say. Average just eight points a game, but uh, eight rebounds uh, really control the glass on the defensive end. He also added two blocks a game. Uh, did a good job altering shots around the rim, using his mobility to kind of pester opposing ball handlers trying to score around the rim. Love that, for sure. Uh, now we got Diego Burrito. Yeah. So I'm Diego Burrito. Cool. Yeah. He's the point guard for this team. He kind of facilitates in the half court. Mm -hmm. uh, good open court playmaker as well. He averaged eight points, six assists, and then also two steals. He's a pesky defender. Uh, he'll get in passing lanes. So it's another key contributor for them. Another solid player, and then another solid player for sure. And then to close out of uh, Florida Bayhawks, we got RJ Ingram. Um, yeah, RJ Ingram is another versatile player. Can kind of do a little bit of everything. He added 12 points a game, four assists, five boards, and two steals. So obviously you can make an impact in – Pretty much every aspect of the game. I love that. Also, shout out to the name. You got my two favorite swimmen, RJ Barrett, you know, Brandon Ingram. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. moving right along, we got Wolfpack OKC. Uh, we got Israel Forget. Fugit, maybe? Listen, uh, yes. I'm, I'm going Fugit. to you. I'm, listen, I'm, 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 I'm trying to lob him. Just stuff right. like that lobs. But let's yeah. talk about is Israel. Let's talk about him uh, and a little bit about his play and all the things that you saw he was able to do for Wolfpack OKC. For sure. Wolfpack OKC had a big bounce back weekend going 4-0 after going 0-4 actually in their session one. Way to turn so, around. Yeah, for sure. Israel Fugit is a 6-6 wing. Super lengthy, probably plus 4, plus 5 wingspan if I had to guess. Uh, super impactful in transition. He's got huge, takes huge strides, fluid strides to cover ground and transition. He's a play finisher on the interior. And then he also offers some rim protection uh, with, with a good vertical athleticism. I love that. Also, totally random, but shout out to both you and Trey. Y'all are really good at, like, doing wingspans and heights and stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm like the people on the day now, so I just generally throw it up to the taller. 6'4", <laughs> 6'5", six, six, you know. <laughs> I'm like six. Anyways, got to give a credit to that because, uh, yeah, I couldn't do it. Uh, but moving on to Ballers Nation, uh, we got we got Kenson Anderson. I said that right. Let's talk about him a little bit. Yeah, Kenson Anderson. He was a glue guy for their team. He kind of 
there's not maybe like an elite trait that he has, but at six foot, he's very well rounded. He impacts the game in various ways. He'll play hard on on the defensive end. He'll uh, move the ball on the offensive end and just really impact the game in multiple ways. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at what I have to pronounce next. Listen, y'all, I got to say, first off, shout out to Kenton Anderson. Your game ain't funny. I'm sure it's legit. I'm laughing at the teams I got to talk about next, and they're not funny either. They real. We got prominent elite. We got kingdom performance. We got RSC basketball, lion chasers, chaos, one dream, one team. <laughs> and then we got team. Team Nerefid. Team Ten Effort. Yeah. <laughs> team ten, ten, F, 10 F. Yeah, that. Yeah. Say it for me one more time. Team Nerefid. Is my huh? That's my guess. No oh, okay. Idea. Hey, shout out to y'all because yeah. listen, well, that game was no laughing matter. Um, that's all that matters. Once I know how, yeah, that's all that matters. What y'all did on, on the court and, and going undefeated, no easy task yet again. So, shout out to y'all and thank y'all for that because I was I was struggling. Okay, <laughs> going on to um 15U. Uh, we got we got a few teams here real quick though. Okay, Wolfpack Mason. Uh, let's talk. Let's start with Ry- Ryland Sykes. Yeah, so as we talked about with Coach Baker earlier, he's kind of the engine, uh, kind of the caboose for this team. Brings a lot of energy on both ends of the floor, nonstop motor. He averaged 11 points, six boards, four assists, two steals, kind of doing a little bit of everything for them. Also picking up guys 94 feet. I mean, he's he's just so fun to watch. I love watching Ryland. I love that. I love that. That's great. That's awesome. Um, let me see. We got Drew Eckel as well. Uh, what do we have on Drew Eckel? Yeah, Drew Eckel was probably the best shooter this weekend. Uh, he hit 46% of his three-pointers on nine attempts a game in a send blend of volume and efficiency. Um, he scored 91% of his points from the three-point range, uh, just had one two-pointer and three free throws, which says a ton about his game. I have the three-point specialist, but he takes that to another level. Got it, got it. Also, I got, I got to break it down real quick. We got the producer in the ear. Um Team uh, Neferid or whatever. They, um, it's actually team different. They just spell it backwards because they're, oh, they're different. Okay. That's- <laughs> you certainly are. Okay? okay. There you are. Shout out to John. Appreciate you. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That team. Yeah. Team different. I, I'm going to think about y'all for a minute. Y'all definitely different. Love it. Okay. Uh, Let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to the 15 you here. Um, and we were talking on Bo Barker. 6'6 wing. What you have on him? Yeah. So. Like I said, he is an X factor for this team. Obviously, he can impact the game in so many ways. He brings some size and length to this team. Uh, he has he offered some really good rim protection on the defensive end, averaging two blocks a game using his length. And he's obviously a really good athlete. Uh, moves really well at six six, uh, using his plus wingspan to alter shots around the rim and deter players from attacking the rim as well. Love that. You gotta have impact again, both ends, and it seems like that's something that's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, and then moving right on down to another team that took care of their business, didn't play with their food. Who's Houston Apex? Yeah, so this is Houston Apex's third weekend in a row, I believe, playing uh, in an event of ours. So Jay Curie and Lincoln uh, is another standout. I talked about him after session one. Uh, he's a six-five wing, one of the better prospects in all the fifteen U uh, on our circuit. But he's impacting the game. He's just super dominant on both ends of the floor. They were dominant as a team at a 28-point win margin throughout the weekend, and he was scoring from everywhere, dunking on people. I mean, he's just so he's just so dominant at this age group. That that's dope. That's dope. I definitely want to check out this team for sure. Uh, and then again, we got some other teams just to give some love to. Also undefeated, you got Heartwork. Boom, boom. We got BYC. Uh, we got Epic Academy. Um, and then we got Ballers Nation as well. So shout out to those squads for, again, taking care of business, holding it down, and running the table out there. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have some guests coming up on our end for um, for Walnut Creek, which is a fun experience. Yeah. Uh, but we're going we gonna to bring in – we're going to bring in – we're going to bring in my guy first before we bring in these guests right now. Uh, so we're going to bring in Trey. Uh, Trey Sterner. Uh Listen, Scout Supreme, one of many great scouts we have, honestly, uh, on the team that I'm looking forward to meeting more and more in person. But I was able to meet Trey in person for the first time this past weekend. It was really dope. We watched some great basketball, uh, had some good coffee, lots of lots of fun times. Trey, how you doing, man? Good, good. How about you? I'm doing okay. A little tired, a little tired here, you know, trying to be yeah. team different. Um, but for we're sure. doing good with Shanku up in here. Um, listen, Trey, we had some great basketball here. I, I want to I wanna start by talking about a team that I definitely saw a little bit of. By a little bit, I mean we like I watched like three of the games and we watched part of one together. Um, For sure. 
Um, but this was for 17U, which I, I right. AZ Venom. Got shout out to AZ Venom first. I don't know why I put 16U on my notes, but AZ That's Venom, cool. shout out to AZ, where I'm originally from. Uh, they ran the table. They they played really, really well. Uh, I know for a fact I love their backcourt. I think you have something to say about them as well. But between Denali McNeil and Braylon Heyman, uh, those two were really good while they were scoring for themselves, setting up each other, setting up others, like taking turns, but not in what felt like a your turn, my turn type of way. Um, what did you like about the backcourt and really AZ Venom in general? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they had a great weekend, really competitive group. Uh, that back group is is really tough to stop on the offensive end. They got guys that can shoot it from all over the court. Um, Denali is great. He's six four guard, um, good size, good positional size. He can get downhill. He can beat you from deep. Score it with volume. Um, like he can take over a game at any at any minute. It seems like, and he definitely did that this weekend. Had a couple over thirty, I think. Um, and just a competitive group. I mean, they're going to get after you. They're going to get after it on the defensive end. Um, quick athletic group all around. So I really liked what I saw from them. Um, and, and especially Denali, I think he's a kid that could really see his profile raise over the next few months. Um, as we kind of get into live period action and if he keeps scoring at the level that he is and, um, winning games at the level that that team is, they're going to yeah be a serious problem. Absolutely. And again, going back to talking about me and size, I stood right next to the guy and I'm like, Oh, you're about six, two, six, four, man. One, what does that make me? I I won't even talk about it. I'm not going to be insecure tonight. Um, Yeah. We might be 6'3". We'll go 6'3". We'll go 6'3". Okay, thank you. There we go. There we go. Then I got room to grow in in height. Yeah. And listen, Braylon Heyman, another guy, just a solid. Um, I love Heath Engel's activity on the boards. Uh, I thought Zayden Conchano was a really solid point guard. Uh, He felt defense first, not to say he had no offense, because he knocked down a bunch of big shots. But, I mean, you got guys like McNeil and Heyman taking shots. You know, you pick your spots in their bench. I love the energy there. I love the passion. Like you said, a real competitive group. They get after it. They, they make you hear them. They make you feel them. I know, the really fun group to watch for sure. Um, yeah. Got some other undefeated teams. I kind of want to get some – I'm going to throw them out and just whatever pops out to you in terms of players or, you know, as a team that you want to shout out, please do. But we had yep. Team Utah. Yep. Uh, they they balled out. You had Select Basketball. We'll talk about them a little bit more. But Select Basketball, um, uh, Jansen, they, they, they killed it. Um, AZ uh, – we were talking about AZ Venom, of course, but then also South Washington Select. So – you have quite a few teams, you know, select yeah. basketball as a, as, a, as a unit. We're just on top of it. Yeah, I mean, select basketball, I got to start with them. I, their yeah. whole their whole organization, every team that they bring, um, I'm always extremely impressed with their, you know, their execution, how they carry themselves. Um, just a really, really quality <laughs> program. Um, and they're always going to run their sets well. They're always going to defend. Um, they're always going to communicate on defense, run the floor hard, and, like, they're just a really well coached group. Um, you can tell they're all bought in, uh, and the, that team has spent time together practicing. Uh, just a bunch of guys that play the right way, a bunch of coaches who know exactly what they're doing. Um, that Pro 16 17 U group in particular is a team that won our Pro 16 finals last year, is 16 U. Um, they brought back a lot of guys. Nash Humphreys, in particular, is someone that I think could have a really, really big summer. Um, he's a little bit. He's not the biggest guard. He's about six foot, but dude can score the ball. He's really explosive downhill, great handle. Uh, I mean, they were playing the best teams we had, and he was still blown by guys getting buckets. Um, like he is, a, he's an exciting scorer and reads the floor well as a passer. He can get after you on the defensive end, um, just like an all around good two way impact from him. Um, another guy on that team. Um, that shot the ball extremely well this weekend. Oh man! Now I'm blanking. Hold on, let me get my notes. Let me get my notes. Up. Uh, I'm trying to think too. Um, no. Was it Aaron? 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 It might be Aaron. Uh, oh man! Oh, Aaron Palaka? Uh, Palaka? I yeah, listen. Yeah, the main nice. game is not my strongest suit, but he was shooting the the. We, we say blow the ball back back where I'm from, but shooting the leather off the ball. Odin Howe. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Popped into my head. Sorry. Oh, Bowden Howe was also – yeah. Bowden Howe was an exciting an exciting guy to watch. He's someone that's another shoot off movement. Another shooter. Um, like, he's coming off screens. He's shooting well. He can get it off the off the dribble. Um, he's about 6'4", shooting guard, wing player. Um, he, I mean, he was heating it up. Like, if you let him get a couple, 
couple looks that go in, you're in trouble because uh, he can go off for, for spurts for sure. So I really liked what I saw from that team. Um, team Utah was someone that I walked away really impressed with. I think they are going to be a serious factor when we get to the next finals. Um, I think they're a team that can compete for that for sure. Um, they've got size across the lineup. They've got 6'10 forward, uh, Guy Stone Kasinga. Um, he was strong. He ran the floor, blocked shots, finished everything that he everything that came his way. Um, impressed with him, Albert Felipe, and this this name I'm not I'm not sure on, but I'm gonna try it. Uh, Intunga Senpe. Um, he was six five wing, super athletic. Like he was above the rim all weekend in transition and half court, getting to the rim. Um, could also space it from three. He was just a a tough defender too. Like off the ball, on the ball, he was he was making plays on it. Um, I, I thought that he was someone that I really want to watch more going forward. Um, I think the live period could could be really big for him. Um, that group overall, like their athleticism, their their defensive tenacity, the way they can get out and transition, um, it's going to be tough for people to handle. They got four really tough wins in one of the top top pools down in Walnut Creek. Um, yeah. I expect them to be to be a pretty serious factor kind of moving forward. For sure. And I know Corbin, you saw more of that select that select um Washington. dancing group. Yeah, no, that's I, video. Yep. both of those guys. Um great yeah. weekends for them. Oh yeah, they both killed it. I mean, listen, when I wasn't getting confused half the time, I was like, select, select is great. <laughs> oh, but yeah. like like you said, like you know, Jace Jace Allen will have on the show really solid weekend. Um I'm going to try it again, but Arian Palakau, yeah, I'm pretty sure I said, like, again, I, one thing I, I even told the coach, like, and I'm going to talk, obviously have Coach Jansen on later, hopefully, like, they played so together. All those guys, you could tell by the way they played, the way when they had to get a bucket, they could, that those guys could easily, you know, throw on the cape and, and put on, you know, 12 to 15, 15 to 18 points. But they play within the team concept so well that it just works really well. No, like, it was hard to find one that really popped off in the traditional way that I look for it, you know? And that made it challenging, but also really interesting to see. And apparently that's exactly the way that they want to play. And I think that's really cool. Like you said, Trey, the buy-in there is real, you know? And so you have just togetherness. And yes, if some guy gets hot, they keep feeding the hot hands. You know, if you don't have the shot, you pass for another shot. Again, we see a lot of that basketball here, but it's really cool to see it pop out in such a way that it did for Select. So really enjoyed that there. Um, but and like I said, I'm also giving love, of course, um, South Washington, another another solid squad there as well. But moving on to the undefeated teams in the 16, you had quite a few. Uh, again, just going to throw them out there. And whatever you kind of want to point out, you definitely can. Trade. We got Las Vegas Knicks. Uh, you had Factory NXT. Uh, you had Select Basketball. Um, for, for Wadsworth Group, you had the Team Supreme NXT. You had All Storm Elite. And then Spokane Elite. Uh, what what teams specifically? All of y'all, all of them did really well. What really caught your eye? Yeah, uh, that Knicks Pro 16 team, um, they're, they're going to be really tough. They've got a lot of guys that can go on that team. Uh, one in particular was Zion Harris. He's a guard, can really score the ball. He had a really nice weekend for them. Um, that group just has a lot of size in the backcourt, too. Uh, athletic group, they're going to win a lot of games throughout the summer. Uh, select Basketball Wadsworth, I, I really liked watching them. Um, I watched them just blow the brakes off the team, honestly. Um, a pretty athletic group. Uh, Case and Bryce was someone that got out in transition, had at least three or four dunks in that game as like a six-one guard. Mm-hmm. He was out throwing down one hand, two hand, like just a really a really bursty athlete. Uh, got after people, and then Parker Leap on that team, I really liked. Uh, not someone that was like making eye popping plays, but he was just always in the right spots. You know, off the ball, defensively, he's getting stops. He's keeping the ball movement, converting when he has the opportunity. Um, just just impressed with his all-around game. And then that Spokane Elite group, um, both are 16 and 17 You, I got to give a shout-out. Like, that's just a tough, tough group. Um, yeah. They were both playing without a lot of dudes on the bench, and that 17U finished a game with three guys after a couple fouled out um, and stayed in the game. They, they were up by seven with four dudes on the court at one point. So... <laughs> I, I got to give a shout out to Spokane Lee. That was a, a great first weekend from them in their their first next pro scene action. So I, I got to shout them out. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, but 
but that factory team too, both factories groups are going to be, are going to be tough outs this summer. Um, they got a lot of talent across the board. Uh, a lot of big kid guys that can play. So definitely one to watch out for. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, and then moving down to the undefeated 15 U teams with three, you got team Supreme, got the Brea ballers and central Washington select. I feel, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's what I had. Uh, what do we have as far as thoughts on them? Yeah, for sure. Brea Ballers is a program I, I definitely want to shout out. Across age groups, you know, you guys had Josh King on last week on their 2026 team. They're 15 you going undefeated this weekend. Uh, Luca Perona is a name I've heard come up a couple times. Um, he's been having a nice season so far on that 15 U team. So Brea Ballers is definitely someone across age groups that – that could make some noise. Um, Team Supreme, I thought all the all the groups that they brought down this weekend had a had a really good uh, really good showing. So I'm excited to see kind of more of them as the summer comes along. Especially this 15 u group uh, has a chance to be special. So true. I, I, another I, kid. I, uh -huh. Sorry, I just wanted to ask about Adrian Isaac on the Hill Elite. Obviously, I've seen some flashes yeah. from him, but. He, uh, he oh, seems to be yeah. a really special prospect. What do you what do you think about him? Yeah. Real, real quick, sorry. Adrian, Before we do that, only oh, sorry, I only want to jump in because I messed up and I don't. Want, I, we're gonna switch the table and I want to talk about him. Uh, shout out to Oregon prospects. They also went undefeated. Fifteen U. Yes, I, I felt there was a team I missed, and that was a team. Yep. Shout out to y'all to take care of business. Okay, back to Oregon Sean. prospects. Another group that across age levels, uh, they they had a really good weekend. So I think they'll they'll see some bump in competition coming up, and um, I'm excited to see what they can do. Absolutely. And, and back to you, Sean. That was a great question. I, I was about to go with that, too. So we're of like mind here on the host front. I like it. Yeah, sure. I just want to ask about Adrian Isaac from the Hill Elite. Obviously, he's got the, all the size, all the skills, but what did you see from him? Yeah, Adrian Isaac was really impressive. Uh, definitely one of the top prospects in the gym, in a gym that had a lot of a lot of good prospects. Like, I mean, you got three top top 50 guys with Xavion Stat and Nick Kamenia on it. Joe Sterling and Adrian Isaac came in there and showed that he can be one of those guys one day too, um, for sure. Like he's got a lot of stuff that you could like. Corbin and I were watching the first half of a game and he was already about at a triple double uh, in the first yeah. half. Had eight yep. blocks, eight blocks wow. a half. Yeah, he was just throwing stuff out, um, like the length and the anticipation and timing that he had on the defensive end was super advanced for a 2027 player um i mean it, it was getting to the point where people didn't want to go to the rim because he was he was around it so, so that was great on the offensive end um the jumpers real it was fluid lefty like he hit a, he hit one off off the dribble driving baseline showed really good touch around the rim um was bringing the ball down the court at 611 like that was something that you don't really expect to see as a 611 dude walking into the gym bringing it down the court, especially at the Pro 16 level. Um, I thought, you know, he passed the ball well when he had the chance. Um, and, like, what I really liked was his activity on the offensive board. Like, he, he was there for putbacks very consistently. Like, when it was coming off the rim, he was in the right spot and using that touch to, to kind of to convert. So I think that he will be someone that's easily in the top 100, top 50 as as he moves up so oh yeah i expect that coaches are going to be scrambling to see him this summer um, so i'm excited about his future i believe yeah. it do was do was crazy i mean i remember trey we were sitting there and i kept asking like can he shoot like I, i'm i love shooters are my type of players like if you got a bag and you can shoot yeah like you're a top whatever in my book i don't care like like whatever right and so i remember asking like trey and i was like can he shoot we're like yeah we don't know and then immediately like like i said i told shanku earlier you know, 18 footer, then he hits a three, then another one. And the touch, like you said, Trey was nice. Like dude's going to be a problem. I'm excited. Like face ups, pick and pop. Like he's going to be able to do it all. And like when he get, like when he's in a system where he has guys that, that get it to him in the spots that he needs it, like mm -hmm. he is going to be a serious problem. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to watch more of it. Yep. Like Taco Bell after 11, you don't want no parts of that. Oh, <laughs> which one? Yeah. Sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mars, <laughs> but listen, <laughs> a real quick try. Any other, um, any other uh, players, and it's not undefeated. Just in general, teams yep. that kind of stood out, caught your eye while we were there, because it was a fun, crazy weekend of hoops. Absolutely, 
Um, just off the top of my head, um, that 17U level, Uriah Tennant, he plays for Factory, mm-hmm. dude that scored a lot of points throughout the weekend. Like, he is fast downhill. He he will beat you down the floor in transition, beat you downhill. Um, but he also has got great range. Come off the pick and roll, score wherever you want him to. Uh, like, he's a high-volume guy that, that gets it done at a high level, and he's going to give a lot of teams problems this weekend. That Factory team had – some close games that they didn't quite pull out, but um, they've got size. They've got the guard play. Um, they'll be tough for sure. Him um, in particular was was really excellent this weekend, I thought. For the Knicks, um, Las Vegas Knicks is someone I want to shout out. Uh, I wasn't sure. You know, they had, they had a lot to reload after last year. Um, so a guy that came out and played really well and I think is an exciting prospect is Quentin Rimes on that team. He's a 2025 kid, about 6'7", plays on the wing, but um, similar to JQ Williford from them last year, I think that he has a chance to, to really make some noise this summer. He can get it going off the dribble, um, mid-range from deep. A shot creator on the wing at 6'7", is always something that um, people are going to be interested in, has the athleticism at the rim to, to complement that. Um, so I, I wanted to shout out that next team for sure. 17 you obviously Joe Sterling. Um, I mean, if you don't know the name Joe Sterling yet, you better get familiar. Uh, he's my guy. Legit, legit one of the best scorers in the country. Um, yeah. Like, no doubt about it. He is one of the most potent scorers from all three, all three levels. You know, he's not getting to the rim a ton, but when he gets there, he's got great touch. But what's really special about him is that pull-up shooting, um, shooting off the dribble. He, his footwork, his release, his efficiency are all just high, high level. Um, all right, you know, along with him, another top guy, Nick Kamenia, obviously got to shout him out. He He's someone that I think has grown another inch probably since last last summer. So I think he's probably 6'9 now instead of 6'8. Um, like, he's just someone that you watch and he is constantly – in the right spot making the right play like no matter what the situation you can you can be sure that he's gonna gonna do the right thing he's just wired differently like he sees the game in a different level at six nine he can put it on the floor like what is so special about him is he needs two to three dribbles to get to his spot and he is he's putting something in like he doesn't need to to have it out be on the three-point line and then two or three combo moves like He's grabbing it, giving you two to three dribbles and getting to a spot and, and making it um, like mid range at the rim three. It doesn't matter when he when he decided he wanted to take over a game. It was it was over. Um, so he, he's been making noise at USA Junior National Camp and um, like Harvard Westlake this season. He was he was really excellent. That team was finished top 10 in the country, I think. Um, so he he. It's fun to watch. He's going to be fun to watch all summer. Uh, Xavion Staten, someone that's also blown up over the last couple months. I mean, you he walks into the gym and and you see him. Like, he's 7'1". Uh, he moves light on his feet. He's springy. Um, I think he's one of the elite lob threats and, um, like, lob finishers in the country, as well as rim protectors. Just the instincts and the touch and um, the timing are all – all at an elite level from him. So I, I'm really excited to see where he goes throughout the summer. A couple of other guys I wanted to make sure to shout out Chase Rollins um, for Rose City Ballers. 6'6", six, six, guard wing. Like he he's as smooth as they come off the dribble. Um, he shot the ball really well this weekend. So I think he he can have a fun summer. I think Corbin, you saw him too. Um, yeah, do can fill it up. Watch. He can... He can shoot it for real. So, um, shout out to Chase Rollins, definitely. <laughs> no, for sure. See, love having you on just for all the inside tray and just going as deep as you do. Like I said, we got some great folks here, Shanku. Others, like, really appreciate the insight. Real quick, before we let you go, one, where are you next? I have a feeling I know. Um, but two, is there, like, one person or player you're excited to see? Yeah, I am going to be in Centralia, Washington um, this next weekend. So, excited to be there. Um a team that I can't believe I almost forgot to shout out, but I'm excited to see in Centralia is World Class Renegades Pro 16. Oh, yes. They're a team that that won our next tournament last season. They're up in the Pro 16 now. 
Um, and they showed that they are, they absolutely belong in the, the pro 16. They competed with BTI. They, 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 um, I believe beat the Las Vegas Knicks in a game. Like they are, they're the real deal. Um, they have two guys that are two of my favorite players to watch, honestly, in our circuit, Jeremiah Harshman. Um, he's a six foot guard. He is, I, I put this on Twitter, but he's a joy to watch. Like he makes, he makes the game of basketball look extremely fun. Like, he brings just an infectious energy to the court. Um, and I know Shanku, you saw a good, good amount of Jeremiah Harshman last summer too. Like the dude just, just brings it at a different level. Um, and he sees the floor very well. He can score it from all three levels and like just his, his feel for the game and his decision-making are, are special. Um, so I, I always enjoy watching him and he's one of those guys that like, he never leaves the gym. He, he was there as long or as long as I was on every day, like he is at the gym watching every game. Like he is, he's not leaving and um, just a, a real student of the game. Martin Kopanger is another guy on that team that I think is going to have a, a really big summer. He, especially against BTI United went on a run that was, I mean, really incredible off the dribble. Like he, he can be a special shot maker when he has it going. Like, Six five, he can get it off over people. Um, his footwork on pull ups and step backs is is really really good um, to buy himself space and like he can be kind of a nuclear shooter. Like he when he gets it going, it's it's the basket's looking big. Um, but he's also he's also got bounce too. Like he will finish over the top of you too. For sure. Oh, so, like he he's an exciting kid to watch. Another guy that just like plays with an excellent motor and like never stops going so shout out to that team like they are they are one of one of the more fun teams to watch like consistently throughout last summer and starting this one like love seeing them play um love catching up with them after the game and uh you know obviously niel rob niel robinson nate robinson son coming in so nate nate robinson was in the gym gotta shout him out i mean he he wasn't just in there to watch watch his son's game either um, like he was staying in there, he was watching, watching games, showing people love. So yeah. really appreciate, appreciate him being in the gym this weekend and his son can ball too. Um, he's a, he's a bulldog, um, on the defensive end, he gets after you, makes plays off the ball, gets downhill, like plays through contact really well. And he made, he made some big plays late in a couple games, like took a charge, made a three. So he, he's, he's got the, the winning wiring. So good. Yep, got for sure. Got well, speaking of another guy, got the goods trade. It's, it's yourself, man. We thank you for coming on again, giving us some great insight on these players, these teams. Really appreciate you. And uh, like I said, we look forward to. Well, I look forward to hanging out with you. Look forward to having you on again here, like in real soon. And again, thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Jared, thank you, Trey. Right, one of the greats, man. One of the greats. From one great to another, apparently here, Shanku. We are definitely. Yes. Next up, we've got one of our team directors, uh, who's. Feature on one of our earlier episodes, Kyle Unruh, who was up in Rockford, Illinois this past weekend to cover some ball there. How are we doing, Kyle? Hey, Kyle. Man, I'm doing great. Big shout out to Corbin Ford and Shanku Nair tonight. They are doing an unbelievable job on this show. Uh, I love the new bold segment of uh, 16 and under Final Four predictions for the Pro 16 Final Four. Uh, I know I know your audience is excited to get Shanku's predictions for the U-17 and the U-15 in the coming oh. weeks. Uh, people love those bold predictions when you have only seen, haven't even seen half the Pro 16 yet. So keep those coming. Everybody's having a great bold, time dude. with it, guys. It's bold for a reason. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, man. There, there, there's only 12 programs that are that hate you right now. <laughs> Kyle right. coming out fire, and I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> nah, you, you guys are my guys, man. We had, we had to have a, we had to have a little fun, right? Yes, sir. Right, yes, right. sir. We love it here. Thank you for that. No. <laughs> Wake us up a little. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right, Kyle. There was a lot of good teams down up in Rockford, Illinois, where you were at. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. start with the U-17, Iowa Barnstormers Gold. Uh, there was two guys that really stood out. One of them was returning from last year, Anthony Galvin. Kato, I really liked last year. What did you see from him this weekend? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I liked him last year, too, Shanku. Uh his body's gotten bigger. You can tell he's, he's put some muscle on. Um, Anthony may be as good a shooter as we have in our circuit. Um, 
plays with a really high IQ, which translates over into really uh, selective. You know, he's really selective on his shot selection, doesn't waste any motion. Uh, he's one of those guys that when he lets it go, um, you know, you're pretty confident that it's got a chance of going in. Um, shoots it off the catch, shoots it off the dribble from behind the line, mid range. I mean, he, he's got all the shots. Uh, other guy, the other guy that stood out for me, and this is a good, this is a good barnstormers team is Dom Clay. Um, Dom six, four, six, five, uh, the ball in his hands, uh, just, just makes plays can score it from three levels. Uh, he'll play both ends of the floor, conscientious defender, um both both those guys really fun players to watch uh and and kids that will will all follow for sure uh but that barnstormers team had a good weekend went four and oh and there were some good teams there were there was good competition in rockford this weekend for sure i think they'll be in st louis this weekend too so they'll be here to yeah watch. yeah 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 another team that went four and oh was team fev uh talk about amir danforth and Jaden webster for that squad yeah yeah so amir's playing up this year he, he's a 26 kid playing 17 and under um his grandpa is the coach and uh does an unbelievable job joe's joe's a terrific coach and has those kids playing really hard um you know you can tell you can tell a lot of times what kind of coach is coaching a team by the level the competitive fire that a team plays with and this team does that you know, they're a little bit undersized for a 17 and under team. And, you know, I kind of kept waiting for somebody to give them a game or, or you know, beat them. And um, if I wasn't, if I hadn't been, you know, clued in on the game and I kind of walked by and passed by and watched for a little while and saw a score, they were always beating everybody by double digits. Um, and, and these two kids are, are special. Amir, probably six feet. Um, had a great conversation with him after the game, just shoots the lights out. I mean, you can't give him any space uh, from anywhere. He, he is going to knock it down. Uh, I asked him what his workout routine was when it came to shooting just because I was so impressed with how well he shoots it. And um, he just puts a lot of time in the gym. He loves the game, and he's a gym rat. Uh, and then Jaden, Jaden's that glue guy. Um highly trusted player that a coach wants to have on the floor because he's not going to make mistakes. He's going to get a uh, 50, 50 balls. He's uh, going to steal extra possessions. He's going to take charges. He can score it. Um, going to guard the best player on the other team. Uh, he's just that guy that kind of stands out as really, really impacting winning. So those are, those are two guys that stood out for me and i um, excited to follow them. Sure. Uh, talk about Kayvon Hodges. I think he was on their uh, Quad Cities Shockers Orange team as well last year. Uh, he's a returner. Talk about his game and what you like from him. Yeah, good, good, good frame. Athletic kid. Um, probably his strength is um, defending and then grabbing it and getting it out in transition. Um, makes the right decisions. Makes the right plays. Really good downhill player. Um, I mean, he's that guy that when you're you're playing against him, you're like, uh, I need at least two dogs to guard him because one of them's for sure getting in foul trouble, and I need somebody to back him up because this this guy is just going to bring pressure constantly. Um, so he he's really fun to watch too, just from just from a competitive standpoint. For sure, uh, another team that went four and was Greater Purpose Athletics. They're a new team on our circuit. Uh, what do we expect from them, and what do you like about Jay Banks on that? Team? Yeah. New new team for sure. Uh, Jay Banks uh, could be one of my favorite players, and um, which says a lot because I know a lot of these kids. Um, six one, maybe six two, um, really explosive. Um, you could just tell, you know, he pounds the ball when he dribbles it. He 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 moves. I mean, he just carries himself honestly, kind of like a pro. And wow. and you kind of you kind of just see that mentality that he plays with. Um, he split a, he split a double team and found a crease, uh, and went up in traffic and just yoked it. And, and he's like six, one, maybe six, two. I, I didn't see any of that coming. I mean, it was one of those where the whole gym went, whoa. And, and we were too deep for the rest of the game to watch this kid, see if he's going to do something else. Um, so, so 
remember the name Jay Banks. He's he's going to be heard about. Yeah, it's yeah. high praise. It's high praise for him. Um, talk about Team Hustle. They also went 4-0. They've got some dudes in uh, Dante Pfeiffer and yeah. Don Hodges Smith. Yeah, yeah. Both uh, both of them unsigned seniors. I've seen them for two weeks now. They they were at Grand Rapids when I was up there, and then they were in Rockford. They're a Michigan club out of, out of Michigan. Uh, Eric Glass is the coach, does a tremendous job. Really fun coach to watch. Passionate, energetic, um, really locked in on his team. You know, doesn't have anything to say to officials or anybody else. He's just, he just a coach that's fun to watch. And then – and then you got Shanku. Do you did you um, you? It's okay if you say no to this, but did you get a chance to cover Jalen Watson any this past year in Kansas? Oh, a ton. He's one of my favorite players in the country. Okay, well, regardless well, of last year. Okay, <laughs> so Devin Hodges Smith and Jalen Watson was a matchup. All okay. right, Devin Hodges Smith is a probably five ten, five eleven, and uh, and you know Jalen's not real big, right? Hmm, five and, eight. Uh, probably. Yeah, I was anticipating this matchup as soon as I saw it on the on the uh, on the schedule because I watched Devin um, in Grand Rapids and Devin Devin's strength is on the ball defense, and mm. so you can already picture you know what I'm what I'm anticipating Shanku when that matchup comes up because because Jalen rarely has any trouble getting by the first layer right, right. and and right. then he just makes plays and bro this was a dog fight. Uh, you, you, you need to see this kid. I mean, he's just, he's just built for competition. Uh, and, and, you know, I think he goes into every game hoping the other point guards, the best player, because he just, he just wants a piece of that action. And Jalen does great. And he didn't, you know, they, they matched up and it was, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a draw from my perspective because Jalen's a really good player, but that's who Devin Hodges Smith is. Um, and then his counterpart, uh, Deontay Pfeiffer, 6'6", again, unsigned senior. Um, I had a conversation today with a prep school about both these guys, um, about the possibility of prepping. Um, they're, they're that kind. They both got offers, JUCO offers already. Um, but but uh, Deontay, 6'6", um, probably his strength is all on the offensive end, but he's a conscientious defender. Uh, he'll guard, guard multiple positions, um, but he can score it all over the court uh, and put it on the floor and get to the rim, draws a lot of fouls, can shoot it from distance, likes to get out in transition, athletic kid, plays above the rim. Um, this is a team that you guys are going to both want to see when you get a chance, um, okay. you know, for this team, for this team, the team hustle 17 and under. Uh, just coach is fun and the players are fun. And, and it's not just those two, you know, Part of the thing I don't like about coming on here and talking with these guys is because there's so many kids we leave out when we do this. Yeah. And and there's and there's just so many you want to recognize. And there's a lot on that team that we're leaving out that I'd love to recognize. But what but we got time. We we got it, we gotta keep moving. Let's uh let's jump into that sixteens if, if if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I've talked to uh Pac Pac basketball's program director Liam Wolf quite a bit. And he's really high on all three of their teams, but their 16 new team had a great weekend going for now. Talk about Cooper Carr. He's a kid I watched a lot this high school season, and he he exploded this this past year. Yeah, yeah, they do have a good team. They got good size, um, really good shooting uh, throughout the floor. Cooper Cooper is a big physical guard, um, probably combo. He can play with the ball and he can play off the ball. Uh, his his physicality and strength probably allow him to guard three different positions mm. on the floor. He can really shoot it. Um, kind of a glue guy too. I mean, he just does whatever is asked and whatever's needed to try and win the game. Um, so so big 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 winner impact winning kind of guy. Um, but but really fun to watch as well. Um, let me let me talk about Grady Payton and then I want to talk about Philip Howard. Is that sure. is that okay? Yeah, let's do it. Um, Grady, Grady's a six eight uh, floor spacer, um, um, really talented kid. I mean, he comes from uh, his, his DNA is probably uh, has him growing another couple of inches still. Uh, he looks young. His body looks young. Uh, like most high school kids, he could use a little more weight and some strength. Um, but when you're six eight and you can shoot it like he can. I mean, that's the prospect always, right? Um, had a good conversation with him. Uh, I feel like 
Um, when his defense catches up to his offense, he has a chance to be really special, uh, maybe play at the highest level. Um, and I think he knows that. His offense is just ahead of his defense right now. But with with the length that he has uh, and, and his ability to space the floor, uh, he's got a chance to be really special. Um, Philip Howard, uh, a lot like Cooper Carr and some of the other guards they have on this team, mm -hmm. they can really shoot it. He's a two-way guy, had 37 points and an overtime win in one of their wins. Um, if you're going to score 37 points as a 16-year-old in a game, it's noteworthy, sure. right? Um, and, and, you know, can shoot it, puts it on the floor. He's a physical kid, uh, guard multiple positions. He can play on the ball. He can play off the ball. Um, typically probably going to guard somebody bigger than him. Uh, but that's, that's a credit to just his frame and his strength and his, his mindset. You know, he's just a gritty, tough kid. Uh, this is a fun team to watch, uh, cause they're filled with kids that are like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. excited to watch them. All three of their groups really think have yeah. some talented yeah. kids up and down the floor. They do. But um, there's one more team that went 4-0 in the 16 year division in Rockford, uh, United Pursuit. Talk about Isaiah Theodore. Yeah, I liked him. 6'7", long, um, tough, fearless, bouncy, mm. athletic, um, you know, kind of, kind of that alpha dog mentality on the floor. I mean, when he walks out there, uh, he believes he's the best player on the floor. And and you know, if you can start with that kind of belief at that kind of an age, at that at that young age, it usually translates into good things for you. Uh, and so he's one to absolutely keep an eye on. That that program is good. Uh, this is a new program that we that we you know brought into the next circuit, and and they're good at, at different age divisions. Uh, but he's definitely definitely a guy that we all need to kind of put the name down and, and keep track of as well. I think I could be wrong, Shanku, but I, and I, and I didn't I don't have any players there. But I think Grand Park P Premier was also four and zero okay. in that sixteen and under division as well. Uh, so we want to give a little shout out to those guys. And sure. they're you know this is their this is their next team. They're a Pro sixteen program, um, uh, but their next teams are all really good. Uh, they're fun to watch too. They're they're worth the price of admission to go watch them. Just the way they play, kind of kind of a lot like select basketball. Yeah. This program uh, this program resembles select basketball a lot. Play the right way. Yeah. 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 So I think there was only one 15 U, unless I'm wrong. I went four zero in Rockford. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there I think there were a couple, but but the one I want to talk about is Rice basketball, if yeah. I can. Sure. Uh, run yeah. run by former NBA guy Lamar Lamar Rice. Okay. Uh, they do a great job. I watched uh, their 15 and under play Pax 15 and under, and um, man, they're they're fun. They've got a little guy named Ethan James, um, floor general, just really has great feel for the game at such a young age. Uh, kind of small in stature, mighty in heart, kind of a kid. I tweeted about him, and I and I tweeted five eight. And and he hit me back and just said five ten uh, to, my, to my tweet. And so I, I don't I don't know if he'll ever see this. If he does, Ethan, bro, I am I am standing on business. Uh, you come find me, and we'll measure. And if you're five ten, I'll own it, and I'll go and I'll go public with the mistake I made. But it doesn't matter, bro, because I'm a fan, and you are a mighty in heart and mighty in spirit, dude. And uh, and you're a point guard. I'm I'm a fan of it. I'm gonna follow. So you you don't you can be five eight. You can be five ten. I don't really care. But but I'm following you. I'm your guy going forward. So Ethan James, remember the name. Remember the name. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. I was only expecting an apology like now. Nah, actually, he <laughs> said on business. You don't know me. You don't know me yet, Corbin. Oh yeah, <laughs> not yet. I'm learning. I'm sure. <laughs> oh boy. Another, uh, other guy, other, other guy, yeah, other guy I want to shout out real quick is Cole, Cole Gass. Gass. Yeah, yeah, six five kid, um, really talented around the rim. I mean, they they just couldn't do anything with it when he got it, and they look for him a lot. You know, you don't a lot of teams won't throw it inside very often, um, but they look for him a lot, and and you know he's sh really high usage, shot a really big percentage. They just they just couldn't stop him, um, and a great kid too. Had had a chance to kind of interact with him a little bit too and uh, it's always fun it's always fun when you 
I get to interact with some kids and they're just so respectful and, and grateful for uh, just any recognition. So coal gas is another one we all need to kind of keep, keep track of. Love it. For sure. Absolutely. Any other let me, let me, teams? That no, but no, but I'd like to shout out two sleepers. Okay. Let's do it. Do it. Can I do that? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, these, these teams weren't four and but they had good weekends. Okay. First one is Chris Rupert. Chris is a 6'11", 27 kid, played uh, 17U this weekend for Siouxland Basketball Academy. Um, kind of, kind of new to the game, but he, but he held his own. You would not, you would have thought he was a 17 and under kid. I um, mean, he can step out and shoot. He's lefty, um, space. You know, he he took took up a lot of space inside. He's nimble. He moves well. Got good hands. Good roller on the pick and roll. Uh, I, you know, he's honestly, when I found out he was a 27 kid, I just couldn't take my eyes off of him knowing he was playing 17 and under division and looked like he was a 17 and under kid. So you guys get a chance to see Siouxland, which they're just a good program in general, but you get a chance to see him. I don't know if he's going to keep playing 17s. Uh, James Mayer, their director, brought him because the 15s weren't playing. Um, so if he's playing 15s, it's just going to be a, you know, he's just gonna he's just gonna dominate because um, he held, he more than holds his own in the 17. And then the other one I want to shout out is Caleb Milan, six uh, eleven kid with Circle City Shooters, um, raw, um, really athletic, really athletic. Um, and like I said, six eleven. Uh, you give him a chance, he's gonna drop step and hammer it. Um, a true rim protector. I think sometimes we use that term too loosely. Mm. Um, but he truly is a rim protector. Uh, he doesn't let anything in there and, uh, you, you either got to go in and draw a foul or you got to shoot it outside the lane because, uh, he's a presence in there. Um, and I, I think he has a chance to be pretty special as he continues his development. So Caleb Milan, six eleven kid, 25, uh, with circle city shooters. Awesome. Definitely watching that moving forward. Hopefully I get to see him soon. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Wicker gets you next. Uh, I'm going to St. Louis. St. Louis. All right. I'll see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be there? I'll be there. Yes, sir. Awesome. Corbin, yeah, are you going to be there? I will not. I'm in Washington, but I can't Ooh. wait to run into you. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I, can't, I, I still need me Sean Cole person, so I can't wait to know. Know. It's going to be good. Yeah. I'm, hey, I'm, hey, I'm knocking them off. I'm so proud of you guys, man. This is this is such a great thing that you're doing. Um, I mean, I mean we're, we're, we're on a mission, right? We're trying to help as many kids as we, have, we can. Right. And that's what you guys are doing when you're when you're hosting this show. You're having a blast with it. Uh, get a lot of feedback in the gym every weekend uh, about this show. So, man, keep doing what you're doing. Let's help as many kids as we can. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. Thank well, you again for coming. We yeah. appreciate you. Yeah, and have we're a good doing. night, guys. Yep, you too. too. Man, another fun one. Kyle's a good guy, man. He <laughs> he'll stand on business though. He called me out. <laughs> he called a little I laughing. team you get out. I mean, I know. Oh you man, love, you love the energy. You do, you do. I, I need that energy here. But you know, we got we got guests still on the on the rise. We got a full slate. Let's bring our next guy. Shout out to Lyro. Yeah, we got we got ourselves in here. Um, I, I, we going we going back. We we went on a little trip to to Rockford. We are going back over to Walnut Creek. We got to talk with some folks from Team Select. First, we're gonna start with the coach. We got James Jansen in the building coach, doing, coach how are you sir good guys how we doing can you hear me yes sir you loud and clear yes sir Perfect. good to see you also shout out to the laker in the back i mean what's kobe but also lakers i mean that's that's me i, I heard they just i got a text they just won the anyway, yes, it doesn't matter yep yep we got to, we're not gonna talk about who they're playing but yep that happened <laughs> um but yeah coach thank you again for coming on really appreciate you and the time uh to start uh always like to ask folks this but where like how did your basketball career start how did you kind of get into basketball and what led you to um you know team select yeah uh good question i've been i've been a, a hoop head my whole life uh growing up my dad uh, i guess it passed down from him and so just just playing as i grow up and then i uh, got the opportunity to play in college a little bit uh and i was uh, finished my uh my schooling up at uh, sac state and so i was in sacramento and a buddy of mine troy selvey drew me back into to the high school ranks. And I was coaching some grassroots down there uh, in the Adidas stuff with uh, the Pharaohs down in Sacramento area. 
And then uh, one of my good friends and uh, now friend, I guess he's a coach. He still is coach, but uh, Todd Franklin uh, got the job at Simpson University uh, up in Reading, uh, NorCal. And so uh, I went with him up there. Uh, so high school, Ponderosa High School, Sacramento area, went up to went up back home where I'm from in Reading. Coached at Simpson for three years, uh, and then uh, just kind of on a whim. Uh, my wife and I were looking at moving, and uh, I had met Coach Blaine, Colby Blaine, up at the College of Idaho about a year and a half prior. I was visiting some friends up in Idaho, and I just shot him a text and said, hey, you know, I'd love to – just love to connect with you. I'm, I'm around, you know, and he got back to me right away. And so uh, about a year and a half later, uh, my wife and I were looking at moving, and, and I said, hey, if you got any moving on your staff, just let me know. I'm, I'm potentially moving. And uh, – he uh, he got back to me and things worked out. And so that was when I got to the College of Idaho. And that's uh, that was COVID summer. So my first initiation with uh, select basketball, I guess, if you will, was COVID summer, man, trying to find gyms to play. We were we were playing in the, these small schools everywhere in Utah. And and uh, I think I had a 15 U group at the time and we were just out there hooping, having fun. But basketball had gotten taken away from us. Right. So any basketball mm-hmm. we got, we were we were soaking up. And so I met, I met Clint that summer, my two boys, I had, I have boys now they're 11 and nine. So this was oh, wow. four years ago now, um, you know, did a, did a select basketball camp. And um, I just had asked Clint, you know, if you ever need any coaches, let me know. Uh, and so he needed one. It was 15 years. So I jumped on it. So this is year four I guess this summer we'll start year five uh, with select, but it's been, it's been awesome, man. So to get to work with these guys across the board, you've probably, Corbin, I know you were in Walnut Creek, but we got, we got a host of coaches that, that are fun to be around and learn from and learn with and, and, uh, do this crazy basketball thing together with. So that's kind of in a, in a short story, my, my, how I got connected with select is just my, my move to the Valley here in Boise. That is awesome. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that one that's just really cool. Like you said, just being there, you know, making waiting for opportunity, but also making an opportunity. And again, from a guy who's been a, a ball lifer, like that's really, really dope. And shout out to bringing me back to the, the times, like you said, during the COVID times, we were looking for hoop. I remember like anxiously turning on ESPN to watch NBA players play NBA 2K, not even basketball, <laughs> like 2K. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I can't wait. My eight o'clock, like, dude, it was rough. <laughs> streaming got real popular there with all the Twitch streaming with uh, the games mm-hmm. and stuff. Oh man, for real, for real, <laughs> definitely. Um, but looking at obviously, you know, your journey up to Team Select now, being with them the last couple of years, um, yeah. obviously now in the Next Pro circuit, can you describe a little bit more about your experience with Next Pro, with Puma, with this team? Like, how has that been for you? Yeah, well, this is um, so I coach the the Next Seventeen group for us. Mm-hmm. Um, Clint Horderman obviously has that that Pro Sixteen group that that uh, that we have. I coach the the Next one, yeah. and then. Uh, this is my first, this Walnut Creek was my first uh, experience with the, the Next Pro uh, weekends. And so um, we were on a different circuit last year, our second group. And then and then uh, the guys decided, hey, let's let's go do some West Coast based tournaments. And, and um, that's where a lot of our kids get recruited. And so it was important for us to make sure that our kids were playing in front of the right coaches. Um, that's one thing Select does really, really well is is uh, we understand this process as, as college coaches that have been in this thing for a long time. And Clint, who's been in this thing for a long time, uh, we want to make sure our kids are in the best possible situation for them to get exposure because that's what it's about. Sometimes some of these uh, some of these programs will just jump on a circuit to be on a circuit and, and have a have a an emblem on their jersey and, and say they're on this circuit or that circuit. Well, the kids, the kids on, on most of those rosters aren't flying across the country to go to school. There's hundreds of thousands of kids in between. And so um, when when Next Pro decided, hey, we're going to come to Washington, we're going to come to California, we're going to come to Arizona, we're going to come to these spots where uh, a lot of our kids get recruited too. Obviously, uh, you know, our Pro 16 team, those kids get recruited all over the country. But with the, with the rest of our groups, um, you know, we're not – you know, there's different levels to this stuff. And so you've got to, you got to make sure your kids are in those situations. And so I just appreciated the fact that, that select took the time and, and said, Hey, we want to make sure we're in the right setup and the right fit. And um, obviously with those changes uh, for this year, it was a no brainer for us to jump on, um, you know, with the rest of our groups and teams and, and uh, be together again. Cause that's part of what makes select special is, is, 
You know, it doesn't matter if you're on, you know, a top team or a second, third, fourth team, whatever it is, like we're learning from each other. If you watch Corbin, you were there in the gym, mm -hmm. you watch one of our teams, you had like six teams sitting on the baselines and the sidelines on the benches. Um, and, and we all run some of the same stuff. And so we're learning from each other. You'll have at any given time, you'll have two, three, four college coaches sitting on one bench with three kids on the bench. And we're talking to each of them as they're out of the game and just going over different things to think about different concepts. And so it's a collaboration effort for sure. Um, we all we all try and coach with each other and that's what makes it makes it fun for us. And so this weekend was awesome in Walnut Creek, man. I felt like it was uh, really well ran for for my first next pro event. Um, I've been to grassroots, uh, gosh, you know, 15, 16 years now. It's been a long time. And then I played in it before that. I was playing in in the Adidas pump stuff back in the day, right? Um, and so I've been around it for a long time, uh, but it was really well ran. Love the facility that we were at in Walnut Creek. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, that was that was good. And so the teams, the competition was good. Uh, I'm excited. You know, I think we're in Washington this weekend and I've been at this facility before. So I already knew where we were going and that facility is top notch. So it's uh, it's going to be another good weekend. That's awesome. You said in the stage because I'll, I'll see you there. So I'll, that'll be fun for sure. Yep. Definitely. Um, speaking of, like you said, you talked about the culture of um, Select and yeah. Like it was true. I was telling, I, mean, I, I wrote a piece about saying things about it all weekend. Like I loved y'all and I didn't because it was so good to see like, just the team playing well, but it was like, also I'm looking for, okay, everyone plays well. Like it wasn't like, oh, this person like really carried you this quarter. If there was a hot hand, y'all kept feeding that person. It was dope to see, but it wasn't like, I don't know, I guess what I've been trained to look for, which is like that one person like consistently thread. It was making the right play, whoever that may be. Different mm -hmm. people getting hot, different games, all of that, which was again, just a really, really cool experience, a refreshing one to kind of see a change of pace for sure. So can you describe a little bit of your, your coaching philosophy? I guess selects general coaching philosophy. Like you said, there was a lot of, you know, different coach, coaches, players in this, in different, you know, whether or not they were on the same team, hanging out, watching all of that, just kind of how that's been incorporated almost into the, the, the threading of select basketball. Yeah. Well, Clint, uh, it, it starts with Clint up at the top. He, he's the director. Um, I know Andy is, is kind of his right hand guy. Um, and Andy coaches our 15 U group, but it starts at the top with, with, I would say those guys and just building the, building the culture of it. And, togetherness i guess is a big piece to it um and so that that's definitely something we try and preach any successful team i mean shoot you heard dj burns say it and nc states run why are they having so so much success now well they just decided to come together and so um it's something we preach uh, early on in our mini camp that we get together uh, we work out together of course we work out with our individual teams when we get to mini camp but we're scrimmaging each other i mean our top 15 team will scrimmage our top you know our top 17 team, it doesn't matter. We just play, we just play. And, um, you know, we, we mix it up. If for some reason, one of the coaches can't be at a mini camp or something like that, one of us helps in and steps in and, and those guys get, get, get mixed in with our team. And so, um, you've got guys practicing together. We'll be at one facility. We'll get in early. Like we're getting into uh, Washington, uh, on Thursday night, we're going to practice, you know, Friday morning this past week. We got in uh, Thursday night. We practice Thursday night. We practice Friday morning and half the time we're together. And so um, that's just kind of the fabric of it. Right. And I guess that's where it starts in terms of us sharing the ball. Um, our our teams are built in a very specific way. Like you said, there's always you know, you're, you're trained to teach like there's always one guy putting pressure on 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 the other team. Right. Well, for us, it could be any given guy. Um, but yep. at the same time, we've got dudes on each team that could play on other teams like they are good enough to be on a top team. Um, but that's not what they need for their role. They've got other dudes that are going to be ball dominant. Like we need to make sure that guys are getting the opportunity to show what they can do. Why, why have them all in the same group and and minimizing their skill set just to just to have a top team. And so. Obviously, you know, we have some phenomenal players on that top group, but, you know, with my group, we've got guys that can play on that team, but they need to be able to showcase what they can do, uh, you know, to other coaches as well and, and be able to show, hey, I can be a guy. I don't just have to be uh, this role player. But then you've also got guys on on these teams that 
show, hey, man, I fill a role. Like, this is what I do really well. I shoot the ball really well. I defend and I rebound. Like, I'm not your ball handling guard, right? That's that's this guy's job or that guy's job. And so yeah. even on some of our other 17U teams, like, we, we've got kids that can score that thing, right? And some of them are like, man, he had a huge weekend. Why isn't he playing on a higher team? Well, he's showing he can score that thing. Like, that's that's his job. If he was on this team, like, he's not going to be scoring it. That's that's Nash Humphrey and Bodie Howe's job. Like, you know, yeah. that's, how, that's how those rosters get built. And so it's all complimentary pieces, very much like a college coach would build it. Like he, he can't he can't recruit seven Nashes like, you know, you got to recruit pieces to each other. And so um, that's kind of how I think we try and build it. Uh, guys that fit each other well and, and uh, mesh well and then also showcase, hey, what what team is going to fit this guy, you know, best. And so that they can give themselves the best opportunity to, to play at the next level. No, for real. That is that is. So, so cool to hear just the philosophy in the top down really, really makes a lot of sense. And you see it on the floor. So that's really, yeah. really neat. Um, just real quick, or two more questions. One, I mean, we're about to have Jace Allen on, uh, mm -hmm. but we've been talking so much about team basketball. Now, now is shout out time. I want you to like shout out, obviously, Jay, some other players on your team that, you know, people should kind of keep an eye on. Yeah, no, we've, we've got an unbelievable group. Um, you know, I coach, I coach that uh, next uh, uh, 17 U team. And, and I'll be honest, Andy and Clint and myself and, and uh, some of our other coaches, we've done a ton of recruiting, uh, for, for, for this group. And we've had a ton of kids tell us, you know, Oh coach, I'm going to go play on a top team somewhere else. And, I, and I've always, you know, enjoyed that, uh, that, that idea and that concept because this weekend we get to go play three pro 16 teams because of how well we played this past weekend. And we've got some dudes with, you know, some division two offers and, and really good top 25 NA off, NIA, NAIA offers. Um, and so um, our, our team is extremely good. I mean, you look at it, you said you're going to have Jace on, you look at Jace just from a guy controlling the pace of the game from start mm -hmm. to finish, making the right play, getting downhill, drawing two, finding the easy one. Right. And now he's expanding his game to be, no, I'm going to be a dude. If you leave me, I'm going to knock this down or I'm going to finish. Uh, and, and that's that's the next progression for him in his game. Right. He's always been a playmaker for others. But now he's seeing, OK, where do I where do I pick and choose my opportunities um, in these moments? And so he, he does a really good job of that with our team uh, and a compliment some of our other guys. I mean, you talk about Asher Williams, a legitimate six, six uh, from North Idaho Bonners Ferry. I think he had 30, 30 in our last game. I mean, he started the first half off with 20 and he didn't slow down too much in the second half. Um, but he can shoot it. He can get downhill and get to the rim, right? He finishes well with both hands. He has a great IQ. Um, he's a good. He's a good shooter, and I think that's where that's the next progression of his game, right? How does how does his ability to finish at the rim stretch it? Because he's a mismatch nightmare at six six, right? He can post you up, but then he can stretch you out when you put a traditional five man on him, um, you know. And so I think this 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 season's going to be big for him. And then you look at some other guys on my team, Michael Nance. He led the state of Idaho in, in shot blocks at the high school level. Wow, six seven, freak of a track athlete. Um, and he's going to continue to block shots. And he is just scraping the surf surface of how how talented he is. His best basketball is ahead of him. Um, and at 6'7", a freak athlete, like it's it's going to come. Bigs always develop late. And so, um, you know, Marcus Coombs, another guy on my team, 6'5", uh, 6'6", six, six himself, rebounder, super high motor. I was talking to him today um, because this is his first introduction into, into high-level club ball, right? He plays at a really good 3A school, Snake River, over, over on the east side of the state where he's always been the best athlete, right? But now he's seeing, holy cow, my motor is what's going to separate me apart. He's strong. He's physical. Um, and, and having a great motor, I guess, is now a recruitable trait at the college level, right? That's not just something that comes standards with high, standard with, with stars next to your name. Um, you know, you got you got to have a high motor. And so he definitely does – does that and checks those boxes and and shoot you guys shouted out uh baba arian my my uh, shooting guard with that group man he he shoots it at a super high level yes. we've played against him for the past couple of years and um he shot the leather off it. and so when he was looking for looking for a spot he uh he reached out to us this this past summer um, and we've stayed in contact uh, i think all at the end of last summer all season long until you know, uh, spring spring ball came around and we're not a club that plays in, you know, 15 to 20 tournaments year round. Uh, and so some some kids will go play every single weekend. And wow, 
that's just not that's just not something we do. We plan specific weekends for specific purposes, live periods and tournaments to get ready for live periods. And so um, he's waited a long time to be a part of select and he's he's taken full advantage of it for sure. That is really, really cool. Way, way to pick games selectively. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. The bad puns just come out. All right. Um, real quick, though, before we let you go, uh, Coach, and thank you again for your time. Always this person a question. You dropped the nugget earlier when you said you played. Um, what player comp do we have for you? Like, like if you would describe your playing style. You can describe it how you are now. You can describe it how you were. I don't want to put your prime out like it's over, but you know, like no, no, hey, my prime is well past. I got three kids oh, okay. and the fourth one on the way. My prime is well done past Corbin. It's, okay. it's well, congrats, over and but, gone. Right. I'm, I'm dad, I'm husband now. I might shoot it a little bit at practice, but my prime is well over with. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the comparison and, and and I'll own it. Like I don't mind it at all. I've I was always kind of an undersized big. Well, a guy by the name of Dave Ankrum. Uh, Sacramento legend, shout out, mm. that, shout out, Dave. Uh, Sacramento Country Day is a small private school in Sacramento, and that's where uh, I used to hoop after after I got done playing. And it was it was the who's of who's in the Sacramento area. You know, guys coming back for the summer and pros and Kings players on breaks. Like we would play, and they they gave me the nickname. Everybody had a nickname. Everybody, Dave uh -huh. gave everybody a nickname. It was Big Baby. So undersized. I could finish well around the rim. I mean, I could probably shoot a little bigger, like okay. Kevin Love, big baby. Like my yeah. footwork is what is what uh, what I guess was my best uh, attribute. But I was an undersized big to get step out and shoot it. So that's oh, gonna it. be it, man. Shout out Dave Ankrum. That's a, that's an OG right there. Hey, there it is. There it is. I love the comp coach. I love the time. Uh, Sean Quinn, I just want to thank you again for coming on and, and sharing your story and a little bit about Select. Really appreciate you highlighting such a great program, such great kids, and and, and an undersized, uh, undersized um, but underrated player comp. Exactly. Exactly. I got you. Appreciate you guys for having me on, man. We'll see you this weekend in Washington. Yes, sir. Thank you, coach. Sure. Thank you. Man, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, let's keep the show round and roll. We got another one real quick here. Another member of Select. We mentioned him a few times on the show. Uh, we got we got Jace Allen coming on the show here. Uh, Jace, how, how you doing, man? If you can hear us. Oh, I think I think. Can you hear us, Jace? We might have a few technical difficulties. So we'll put that put that one on pause. It's okay. We, we have. We can try. We can come. We can come back around. We can come back. Around. Oh, oh, it's back. Oh, wow. Okay. So they can't see or hear us right now. It's okay. We'll come back around to it. We have we have another guest. It's it's no, it's no, no, no problem. Yep. We'll get you on here, Jace. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So we can uh move on to our event down in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, we have one of our scouts, Pablo Kong, joining us about great. his experience in, in Jackson, Mississippi. What's up, Pablo? How are we doing? I'm good, man. How y'all doing? Y'all can hear me all right? Good, yes, sir. We yep, hear you. Uh -huh. How y'all doing, man? How y'all doing? Good. Doing good. Happy to have you on. Thank you. Time. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate y'all having me on and uh, giving me this opportunity. Of course. Yeah, so I just wanted to hop in straight to the Jackson, Mississippi event. First of all, how was your experience uh, down in Mississippi this weekend? Uh, I, had a, I had a great time, man. I never – actually never been to Mississippi for anything basketball wise. So, uh, it was, uh, it was a little different, you know, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. So going to Mississippi was a little different, but the event though was a uh, first class, uh, Marcus McGovern. He did a good job of, uh, running the event, making sure everything was, you know, on point. Um, teams came to play, man, a lot of talent out there and um, I'm just eager to talk about it. For sure. Yeah. So I just wanted to cover a few of the teams that went undefeated. They had great weekends, starting with 17U, OT, Team OTP. Uh, they had some dudes. Uh, Jason Cole was one of them. Talk about him. What would you like about his game? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I probably watched all four of their games. And I, I would tell you that um, Jaden Cole is probably absolutely, for that weekend, was probably my favorite player to watch. Um, I think uh, from a, just a basketball perspective, he was probably the best player. Uh, at the event, uh, as far as 17U goes, uh, and I'm not just talking about just, you know, talent and skill. I just mean overall, just best basketball player, just for everything that he does on the court. Uh, really intelligent kid. You know, I had a brief conversation with him. Uh, I actually got a chance to talk with his father. 
uh, we had a really good conversation. And, uh, you know, honestly, I just told his father, you know, whatever you're doing with your kid, make sure you keep doing that. It's working. Um, because, yeah, because it's, it's absolutely working. Um, but nah, Jaden, man, I'm, I tell you, man, Jaden can shoot it. Uh, super high IQ. His feel for the game, man, and his patience to just let everything develop and just not force anything is just kind of, it's kind of elite, bro. Like, uh, I think that, uh, you know, what he does absolutely translates uh, to the next level you know, straight up. And so um, his dad was talking about his recruiting a little bit. You know, I, I really won't get into it that much, but he got some some pretty good looks. And, uh, you know, I gave him my opinion on it. Um, I absolutely, I mean, I'm telling you, man, I absolutely love Jaden Cole for sure. I love him. Awesome. Obviously, Jaden Cole is not a one-man show. He's got some pieces around him in Ty Harpering and Colin Ross. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah so uh, Ty Harpering, man, I was – I. it was funny because uh, – I heard the last name and, you know, I'm, I'm 45 years old. So I, I, I've watched basketball for a while. And the uh, first thing I thought was Matt Hartbring. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jaden's dad actually was the one to tell me that that was his uncle. And when I saw him play, I didn't know any, like, like, mind you, I haven't seen any of these kids play before. So mm -hmm. I was like, who is this kid playing so hard, man? Like he is like the, <laughs> the prototypical guy that will like run through the wall, you know what I mean? To get a win, you know, but I mean, what's most impressive about him is his shooting, man. I watched a game. He had eight threes in wow. one game. And then I think in another game, he had six. I mean, nothing. I mean, in all four games, I don't think he hit nothing less than maybe three or four threes, man. I mean, the kid has an absolute strap flamethrower. Um, like I said, he plays so hard, really, really good defender. And it's mm -hmm. just level, his level of understanding for the game is, is, is really impressive, man. And, um, you know, just the way he puts that all together and it gels with his team is, is really fun to watch, man. So that, that OTP team is really, really good. Uh, I had a, you know, a conversation with their coach. I, I know I'm going off a little bit. I had a conversation with their coach and I, you know, I, I saluted him. I gave him his props. I just told him, you know, you run your program like a college program um, from the offense. They play the communication, defense, everything. So, yeah, no, nah, they got a good team, man. And uh, Ty Harpring is definitely one to watch, man. For sure. That's awesome. Uh, moving forward with another 4-0 team in the 17U group, uh, Team Next Generation. They have some dudes in <laughs> Zay Howard and Lathan Mitchell. Uh, what you like from them? Yeah, so uh, I think I think Zay Howard is a twenty twenty four kid, and I'm signed senior. Yeah, I think I'm not sure if Lathan Mitchell is too. I believe he is though. But um, but as far as Zay Howard goes, uh, I think he's about six four ish, uh, six three ish and a half, six four ish. Um, really long, super athletic, high motor, um, plays on both ends of the court. Uh, just really just takes directions from his coach, man. He never, he's never too high or too low on the court. He plays super hard. Mm. Uh, he's, he's a winner. He's just, he's just out there to win, bro. Like he's going to do whatever it takes to get the win. Um, he did a, he did a lot of, um, a lot of the dirty work out there uh, while also being, you know, one of the primary scorers for his team. Um, he did some things off the bounce. That was pretty impressive. Um, what I think I liked about him most is the way he ran the court. Um, especially on the wing, like when he's not, you know, not the one dribbling the ball, uh, you know, running in transition, just he's filling the lanes and he's just big finishing, big time finishes, man, like dunks, athletic finishes with both hands. Like, I really like what he did. Um, as far as uh, Lathan Mitchell goes, I think he's a little taller than Zay Howard. He looks like he was about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and uh, he was like an inside out player. He did a lot of stuff from the perimeter, man. Like, I mean, guys would come out there to guard him and you know, he made so many shots from the perimeter that it just, it worked out. It, it was more beneficial for him because guys would just fly by. He had to shot fake him, one, two dribble, pull up or shot fake him, get to the rim. Uh, really, really good, really active on the offensive glass too, man. Like he he, he went in there and he fought. Um, that's what I thought was really impressive by him. But, you know, a lot of times perimeter players, they stay on the perimeter. They don't, they don't like to, you know, do the dirty work. So yeah. I think uh, that's what was impressive about uh, Lathan Mitchell, that he went in there and he fought. Um, well, a very, very good coach team, man. Very well coached. I, 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 and I tell you, I think I talked to probably every coach from almost every team. I might have missed some here and there, but I had, uh, you know, extended conversations with a lot of coaches. I like to get a feel for those guys, especially when I see a team that's well coached, because it just tells me what I need to know. And it just verifies mm -hmm. what I what I see out there. For sure. I like that. Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's always good to get that intel, extra intel about a player's yeah. background. But um, another player who was maybe the best player in the gym down in Jackson, Mississippi, was Demarion Bryant for Alabama Generals. 
and how he yeah. takes to the next level. Yeah, it, um, so I saw him play two games, and uh, one I think the first, no, I think it was maybe the second play I saw him play, he shot faked the ball and took one dribble and banged out. He didn't bang out on nobody, but if somebody oh. would have jumped with him, he would have banged out. Don't on fly him. with me. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man, and I tell you, my, my ears perked up because I was watching the game. I had my back to him, mm-hmm. and I just so happened to turn around. I see him catch the ball because he looked like a player. He caught the ball, shot, faked the guy, one dribble, and banged out. And I was like, whoa. I was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Let me watch this game. So uh, as far as uh, like talent-wise, I would say talent-wise, he was the best one that I saw, 17U-wise. Um, really, really good player, man. Skilled. He looked like he was probably about six, six or something like that. Really, uh, long arms. Uh, he's kind of thin, but, uh, he's got the athletic build, uh, really, really athletic guy uh, can shoot it and put it on the ground. I mean, just really athletic finishing, uh, with both hands. He's just a, a just overall good player. I think he's definitely one that, um, could play at a, a high major level, you know, if he gets the right push and uh, he really gets his name out there. I really like the kid and uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing more of him. Awesome. Yeah. I was like, but, but uh, going forward to the 16 year division, uh, Gainesville Stampede was the only group that went 4 uh, 0 in that division. Talk about Justice Phillips. He was a key contributor to them. Yeah, so Gainesville Stampede, and that is funny because that coach was the first coach I had a conversation with. But anyway, I'll talk a little bit about Justice. Um, when I saw him play, uh, that kid, he just, he, he just, he shocked me, man. He shocked me. I wasn't really expecting a lot from him, you know, and it's just off first sight or whatever. Um, and first you play the game, plays at a game, man. I just saw that he was going to be the one. Um, for some reason, man, that kid has a nose for the ball. The ball just finds him. You know, I mean, he's out, you know, he's putting effort out there, too, and he's actually go getting the ball. But um, inside out player, he's about six, four, uh, really long player to put the ball on the ground. He was going he was going by his man like crazy, you know, hitting threes, hitting mid range jumpers, really, really, really killing people on the glass, man. I mean, he would on a defensive end, he was, you know, taking the ball off the glass and pushing it really pushing it and then just making the right reads out there too. He wasn't just out, you know, a lot of guys catch the ball and they dribble, turn it over, whatever. That wasn't him. That wasn't him. He was really making the right reads and he actually knew what he was doing out there. So um, he's a right-hand guy who really does a great job using his offhand. Um, and he's just active, man. Everything he does out there impacts winning. And that's what I think is probably the most impressive thing about him is that, you know, he's a, he's a winner. He's definitely a winner. I love that. Sure. What about uh, Juwan Skibio playing us alongside Justice? Yeah, so uh, Juwan, man, he was a, another kid that um, I think him and Justice, they just complement each other so well, man, so well. Because what Justice, you know, might struggle at, Juwan does well or whatever the case may be, vice versa. Um, but Juwan is a super long player, super bouncy, um, get off his feet pretty quick, uh, does a good job of protecting the rim, even though he's more of a forward than anything else. Um, really good passer, uh, smart kid, man, really smart kid, high IQ, uh, does a lot of things, man, that, you know, college coaches will probably that, that they will desire. Um, I just, I just love the kid, man, everything that he does and that offense that the, uh, Gainesville stampede run is, is, is pristine, man. It's fun to watch that coach does a phenomenal job with those kids. And it's funny because I asked him, I'm like, Hey, uh, What's your background? You know what I mean? And he's a he's a chiropractor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So okay. yeah. So I was he was like, This is just I just do this for fun. He's like, I'm a chiropractor. I was like, You look like you know what you're doing out there. He's like, No, I've been coaching for a little bit or whatever. So, you know, big ups to them, man, and definitely props to them because he's got those kids really, really playing. And uh just the last person on that team I want to shout out before we move on is the point guard, um, Lucas. Batia, I think that's how you say his name or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he's about he's about six foot, you know what I mean? But a really, really, really heady player, man. I've seen, you know, a lot of teams, you know, you get to these tournaments, they just want to press you. They want to speed you up. Mm-hmm. He did an excellent and phenomenal job of not getting sped up, man. I mean, it just it was like nothing bothered him. You know what I mean? Wow. He understands angles. He understands how to get open. 
you know, he doesn't rush anything. You know, he's, he's putting you on his hip, getting you down the court, keeping you on his hip. He might hit a floater in the lane or drop off pass, making, you know, different reads, like second mm -hmm. and third level reads. I really, really, really like that kid too, man. Um, really good shooter and just overall team guy, man. He wasn't like overly vocal, you know, but he was doing everything the right way and his team just followed his lead. And that's what I liked about him. Awesome, Coach. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on to the 15, uh, Team 94 is a team we talked about last week. Uh, their coach, Amber Gregon, uh, also two standouts for them, not surprised at all, Marquez Davis and Joshua Wilson. Uh, what did you see from them this weekend? Man, I'll tell you, you what. Marquez Davis, man. Oh, he's special. That, man, I'm, I'm telling you, man. That was my – so, like I said, it's my first time watching a lot of these kids, and I saw him. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it didn't take mm -hmm. long. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. He I, could play I, with that 17 U group and be fine. Man, for I'm sure. telling you, he was so smooth out there. Everything that he did on the court, man, it looked like next level stuff. You know what I mean? He didn't do anything that was like outside of his game. Like, everything just was so fluid with him. Like, mm -hmm. he had a couple big finishes. Not even, I'm not even talking about dunks. I mean, I'm talking about going to the lane and it's looking like he might pass off or switch or, or do something crazy. And he just laid the ball up. You know what I mean? And like, he was just honestly, he looked, he was so good that he looked like he was two or three plays ahead of everybody. And that's, wow. and when you, and, and when that's happening as a player, bro, like, that's basically telling me that the game is slowed down for you yep, you've seen and that. that you're just on another level. And if that, I tell you what, if that kid grows, Six five six six. Oh man, <laughs> it's gonna be a wrap. I'm telling you, as a kid can do everything on the court, man. And he's and he's so quiet. He's so quiet. I spoke to him too. He and he was so quiet. Like he, I don't think I've seen him talk at all. And and you know, mind you, like a lot of people will say that you know when a player isn't talking on the court, uh, it's not good or whatever. And I agree with that to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But I mean, some kids, that's just them. You know what yeah. I mean? But it works. It works for them. You know what I mean? It doesn't hurt. Some kids can do that and it doesn't hurt their team. And I think that's the type of guy that fits that mold. But I tell you, man, I'm not going to lie. That kid is special, bro. He is. Oh, wow. Super special. Yep. Okay. That's silent assassin Kawhi type. I like it. For yeah. sure. Yeah. There was also two more teams in the 15-year group. Uh, developing characters. They have a kid named Ian Edmund. He had a great weekend. He had multiple 20-point performances. Uh, deadly in transition, but also we the Cardinals. Uh, they also went four nose. Shout out to them. But Pablo, thank you so much for coming on. Obviously, yeah. Corbin, I think you might have a question for them. Uh, you, you know, listen, I, I gotta ask you, Pablo. I, I ask everybody, right. you know, you, you watch right. a lot of ball. I'm sure you play a lot of ball. Give us a player comp. What's your go to move? Give us like a real quick scout report on yourself. And like I said, this could be yeah. you now, this could be you, you know, when you, you know, whenever. I don't like to put ceilings on people. No, nah, so. I played up until um, high school and I played a little bit of JUCO and then I joined the military. Okay. Right. So for the last 20, I just retired about six months ago. Oh, you right. know what I mean? So for the last 22 years, I was in the military. I was in the mm. army. So uh, there wasn't too much basketball being played. I, yeah, about that. I, was, <laughs> I was a little busy. But okay, uh, as, far of course. As, as far as player comp, man, I'm just, man. I'm, I'm Michael Jordan, man. Come on, oh, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's up there with okay. the goats. Hey, I love nah, it. I love it. <laughs> nah, I am Jay. Nah, I just, I just, you know, I mean, honestly, I, I like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm from New York City, so you know what you get from New York City. You're gonna get ball handling guard. Yes, sir. Um, get to the rack. I can, and I, and the, the funny thing though, like I'm, I'm kind of married to the game, so you know the handles never divorced me. I still got Ooh. the handle. You feel I love me? that line. So I, I, know yes, be, I know y'all be talking ball all the time. So yes, whenever, sir. Whenever y'all want that smoke, let me know. Oh, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I get know. you. I get you. Okay. Okay. I love hearing that. Yes, I appreciate you. And and well, okay, real quick, random beside what part of New York? I'm from Harlem. Okay, Park Slope. So I just had to check in. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's okay. what's up. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Coach. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate your time. I appreciate y'all, man. Salute y'all. Thank you again, man. Definitely. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Another dope guest. <laughs> yeah. I love it. The handles do not. I don't think we've missed on a guest yet. I haven't heard that in a minute. No, we have not. We we, we got one. It's going to. It's going to. Through gonna five episodes, on a high I think note. like 100% hit rate. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of 100% hit, hit rate, I was trying to take that, take that hand off. We had a guy who was hot this weekend. 
Um, again, we, we're trying to get back on here now. Play with Select. We talked about him again a little over on the show. Uh, Jace Allen. How's in the building. Can you hear? Yes. Let's yes. go. <laughs> Finally. Yes, man. Happy to have you on. Thank you for taking the time and the patience and waiting us out and helping us get the audio figured out for sure. You get the audio. However it worked out, the audio's figured out. We appreciate you. You got it. Thank you. Hey, for sure, man. For sure. So just to start off, um, so, so far, can you describe your experience, you know, in the circuit, you know, playing with Select? Like, how has that been for you? Uh, for me, it's been pretty awesome, you know. Got Jansen as my coach. Yeah. Love him. Great. And then with my teammates, you know, we're a great group of guys during basketball and then outside we always we got good uh good culture have some fun in the hotels you know but you know stay responsible <laughs> i love it <laughs> and then uh, yeah i mean the circuit's amazing all the all the places we go all the gyms we play at you know when i'm not playing basketball i'm watching basketball because that's what i love to do i love it I love so it. yeah i mean always surrounded by basketball you know and it's always fun especially when all of our teams are playing so it's either when I'm not playing, we're watching. I have a little brother. I'll watch him sometimes. He's he's on the circuit. Um, or just watching our top team, you know. It's always entertaining. That is awesome. That is awesome. Like you said, someone who lives and breathes ball, you know, having access to that, whether you're playing, watching, you know, your brother, your friends, watching regular basketball. Like, it's outside. It's really, really cool. So, I love that. Um, You referenced your team. And in my when you said when you said about the fun y'all have on your team, I was like, get out of my head. Because my very next question for you was that y'all seem so close on the court and just together and how y'all play and, you know, just being in sync. And so I wanted to ask y'all, like, all y'all, I wanted to ask you, are y'all as close off the court, you know, as you are on it? For sure. We are, I mean, we're, surprisingly, we are pretty close because, I mean, we've only met about two weeks ago with our team camp that we did. That was the first time I met pretty much my whole team, the guys um, outside of the Boise area. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a lot of fun, but. Our culture, our camaraderie is really good for just meeting them, you know, um, on the court. Outside the court, it's been translating onto the court. We all know where each other are going, um, look for who, look for when they're cutting, kind of know when they're cutting, you know, when they're going to be open and just their strengths and weaknesses, what they can and can't not do. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was easy to see watching y'all that y'all really have eyes for each other in terms of, like you said, just being in sync, you know? It was, it was like watching a game of 2K where you control all the, all the players because y'all knew exactly where to go. It was really, really dope. I love that for sure. Um, But going more personally into you and your game specifically, uh, for those who don't know, you know, haven't heard of Jay Sound the first time on the show that they're hearing about you, how would you describe your game? Do you have a player comp, a player that you kind of model yourself after? Kind of give us a little bit of scout report on you. Yeah, I'm um, definitely – playmaker for sure you know i kind of got that vision got the iq he sees yeah i do i got the goggles <laughs> there you go yes sir but i mean my goal you know, is not really to go find mine it's just to make make the game easier for everybody else on the court um whether it's me getting the paint dumping down kicking out or i need to score so when i score everybody else is helping and that's when i have you know more assists and for my player comp I'm thinking I've always like grew up thinking about Chris Paul, just the way he plays, kind of resemblance, you know. Yeah, I like always that. looking for yeah. everybody else. True point guard. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, for real. Point point guard over there. I see who he's modeling after Sean. Cause you <laughs> see it. Okay. Okay. No, that's really, really cool. I love to hear that for sure. Um, kind of looking at this season and looking forward, kind of what are your goals with next pro and then even moving a little further, you know, college coming around the corner for you? Like what are you thinking, obviously, for your short-term and your long-term goals uh, between the two? Um, definitely for the circuit, you know, compete. It's kind of nice because with the circuit, our, even though we're an NXT team, we can we can go play against those Pro 16 teams and really show who we are, how uh, how much better we can be than what people we think that we are or expect of us. Um, and then just, you know, making that, making that noise. Um, Showing that people people should be afraid of us. Yeah. Oh, you then, definitely yeah, putting people on notice. And then yeah, yeah. And then yeah, with my college, you know, um I wasn't always played with select. I've started playing with select a couple of years ago, you know, when I started going to high school and when I thought, you know, college is coming up, it's starting to be uh, important to me. So and Select has been has done a really good job with that. I got 
couple of NAI offers, you know, um, and like, thank you. Mm. You know, Selected does a really good job with their exposure. Um, all of our coaches got great connections with colleges, Clint, Jansen, uh, Harrington, Colby Blaine, they all, they all know what they're doing and they're all willing to help us make it to college. That's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. That's what you love to see. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Exactly. Exactly. And then the last question for you, Jace. Uh, again, we ask everyone, you probably heard it. Game on the line. You got the ball. It is, it's what it is. We need a bucket. We need it from Jace Allen. What are we getting? How are we getting it? Oh, I'm going I'm to hit him with that. I'm going to hit him with a hezzy pull. Hezzy pull. I'm going to hit him with a hezzy pull. <laughs> I love that. He knew what he wanted. He knew automatically. You 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 pass, you set him up, but but you you know you got something in the bag for yourself you need to. Yep. Hey, that's what we love to see, man. That's what we love to see. Jace, thank you, man, for taking the time for coming on, both you, you know, having Coach Jansen as well, learning more about Select and just a wonderful program and the great kids, uh, great people you got playing and everything. Like, we appreciate y'all. We look forward to seeing you I know y'all be in uh, Washington, so I look forward to seeing y'all yep. literally in a matter of days here again. Thank you. Hey, no problem, man, for sure. Yep. Oh, man, that was another fun one. Man. Dang. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. Like that was that was that was a blast. And I mean, we're not done just yet. We still gotta go through, you know, what everybody wait for the standings, the standing yep. updates, getting sure. to the good of the, I mean, this whole show's been good, but getting to the meat of it here with where folks are at. So let, let's get ourselves started on that. Let's do it. Standing update up here. What we got? We're gonna start off with the good old fashioned eleven U. Number one, we got the NJ Pirates. Number two, DMV Hoop Stars. Number three is the Texas Flames Basketball Academy. JH5 is at number four. Got Bulls Nation at number five. AO Flight is at six. Central Flight is at seven. And we got the Maid Prospects Basketball Club at number eight. Going on to the 12U rankings, we got Team Museum. What a cool name. And number one, we got AO Flight at two. We got Team United Texas at three. Again, JH5 at four. At five, we got Porter Basketball Academy. At six is Castle Athletics. Central Flight sits at number seven. We got Run as One at number eight. Team Warwick is number nine. Got Extreme Pressure, number 10. GSA GSA Canes at number 11. You got DMV Hoop Stars at 12. GSA Ankle Breakers at 13. Bulls Nation at 14. And you got the Made Prospects at 15. Moving on to that 13 U, you got the Brea Ballers at number one. You got Run as one at number two. Team Grind number three. Annie Hoops Academy sits at four. Got Louisiana Cardinals at number five. The University of Hoops is six. At seven, you got AAO Flight. At eight, you got Team GME. At nine, it's all about Team Oklahoma. At 10, it's Castle Athletics. At 11, you got New Day Elite. 12, it's Team Warwick. You got my Colorado, Colorado Collective at 13. You got Epic Academy at 14. We got the Fam Elite at 15. And then JH5 at 16. Going down to 14, you. JH5 comes back. They number one. And number two, you got the Chaos of Oklahoma. Oklahoma Chaos, number two. Colorado Hard to Guard sits at number three. Love the name, man. Brea Ball is at number four. You got Illinois Future at number five. Team Warwick sits at number six. Number seven is Como TNT. Number eight, you got the Quad City Shockers. Number nine, it's South U. GSA All-Stars at number 10. Boxers Basketball Club sits at 11. At 12, it's Castle Athletics. At 13, we got EAD Oklahoma. 14 is the Wolf Pack of Oklahoma, Oklahoma Wolf Pack. Number 15 is BBT Elite. And number 16, one of my favorite names, Invictus Red Storm. So there's yeah. our uh, 12, 13, and 14 rankings there for you. Yeah, so 15U, we had a little mix-up, but I've got our rankings. I'm just going to read them off as we go. Uh, number one is Oklahoma Wolfpack Mason, who we just brought on. Obviously, 8-0, well-deserved well uh, spot at the one number one speed. Uh, Oregon Prospects, number two, GSA Heat, number three. Uh, Toronto Select, number four. Team Ish, number five. Team Warwick, number six. Team 94, number seven. Uh, Road to Greatness, number eight, J five, number nine. All eight of those, all nine of those teams are undefeated. 
Uh, Houston Apex, who we talked about, number 10, Team Utah Black, number 11, Team Supreme, number 12, PPA Premier, number 13, 816 Hoops, Shamit, number 14, Triangle Offense Elite, number 15, and Next Play Skills Academy at 16. Okay. And moving forward to the 16 new standings, we've got the NTX Raptors at 1, BTI Pressure Elite at 2, Florida Bayhawks Bachelor at 3, Oklahoma Wolfpack Lawton, who is a major riser in the standings this week, at four. Gainesville Stampede RSE at five. Rose City Ballers Saford at six. GSA Elite at seven. OTP at eight. Team Ish at nine. Select Basketball Wadsworth at 10. Team Factory at 11. Team Supreme BLK at 12. Pack Basketball at 13. Team Utah Black at 14. Off to you at 15. And Cap City Scrappers at 16. There we go. And moving on to the final 17 U standings. We've got Team Rogue at 1. Norcross Heat at 2. Team Utah Black at 3. OTP at 4. Family Say at 5. Texas Wildcats at 6. Team FBV at 7. Iowa Barnstormers Gold at 8. Delaware Certified Hoops at 9, Prominent Elite at 10, Alabama Generals at 11, J Uno Elite at 12, Hill City Crash at 13, Unity Sports Academy at 14, Grassroots North Carolina at 15, and rounding out the 17 U Top 16 is Family Morris. What a rundown. Sure. <laughs> a lot of teams, a lot of good basketball. We look forward to doing this next week, having some teams on the rise, right? See yeah. where teams sit after some fun matchups coming up. Standings uh, are definitely very fluid as we move through the weeks. You said it. You said it. Speaking of fluid, our travel schedules. Um, Shanku, <laughs> where are you at this next week? Yeah. I'll be in St. Louis, Missouri. We've got a numerous amount of Pro 16 teams along with some talented next teams. So I'm super excited to get some good basketball. How about you, Corbin? That. I will be up in Washington. I'm excited to watch some great teams, some teams I've already seen, hopefully some teams I haven't you know, taking in some good weather. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. You know, just, uh, again, another place to watch basketball. Who could beat it, right? For sure. I exactly. Agree. Exactly, man. I'm pumped. But listen, y'all, I want to thank y'all again for taking the time to rock with us. Another pretty extensive episode. Had some great guests. And just want to shout out literally everyone who was a part of the show and really was able to give us um, a little bit of time, a little bit of insight, a little bit of experience. Like, all of y'all, we, we really do appreciate that. Um Literally, right on down the line, it was really helpful just, again, to understand more about this great circuit, whether it's great, you know, insight from our scouts, great stories from our coaches and players. Y'all mean a lot, and we really appreciate y'all. So definitely looking forward to having more of that next week. Uh, but listen, y'all, it's been a blast. We got a lot more of this coming. <laughs> it's been a monster of a show. So we're going to sign off here, though. But for Sean Kunayer, I'm Corbin Ford. We are Frosty. Y'all stay frosty. Until next week, y'all, let's have a great one.